Welcome to the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games semifinals. We're in Berlin, Germany for the Europe semifinals presented by Goa. It is week three of the semifinals season. Europe and Asia deciding the participants from those regions heading to the CrossFit Games. 10 teams, 11 men and 11 women coming from here in Berlin. Hi, everybody. Welcome high atop Max Schmeling Hall alongside Mads Jacobson. We'll hear from Lauren Smith in a moment. My name is Joel Godet and Mads, the individuals have now hit the floor for their first event. And it's interesting to see how that plays out. 36th is the worst finish on event one for anybody to qualify from either of the North America regionals at this point. We do have some people that have some work to do here. We do have a bunch of people who do that. And also, I think we need to remember that the, that the feel is a little bit deeper here. I mean, Jennifer Muir did an amazing job. Medlin Pearson did an amazing job. I mean, a bunch of people did an amazing job. Got to be happy with what they've got. But we also have some people who find themselves in a little bit of trouble. The cut line is after 11, so Manan Unganese finds herself three points out. But again, after just one event, Sarah Sigmund's daughter trying to make her way back to the CrossFit Games is right now in a striking distance position through one event. We are still uh, working through the standings on the men's side of things. The teams did also compete today and yesterday, and it was interesting because the favorites coming in had to deal with a little adversity. Oslo Navy Blue had a did not have the start that they wanted it. It was it was troublesome, to be honest, and we were wondering what they were going to do. Second outing yesterday, pretty good. And today, they just went to town. When you are faced with adversity, why don't you go out and just win the darn thing? This was team test number three this morning. Oslo Navy Blue wins, but almost more impressively, of the top five teams, three of them from CrossFit Oslo. It, it, it's kind of scary that it's not just that they have a bunch of teams, they've got a bunch of really good teams. And you know, we saw the the, uh, the handstand pirouette, we we're wondering what that was going to do to the athletes after they've been both on the runner, they've been on the bench press, they've been on the pistols. What's it going to do? And the answer is, if you're from uh, Oslo Navy Blue, it doesn't do anything. You just cruise right through them. But they weren't the only ones. I mean, CrossFit Blackout did a great job as well, and you got Pistanda who also did an amazing job. So. A bunch of teams out there showing that, you know, they're good and they're capable of doing this. First place for Oslo Navy Blue. They are in a qualifying position, but it is CrossFit Prestanda who has a three point lead over CrossFit Trondheim coming through after three events. We are at the midway point. Let's introduce you now to the third member of our crew. Head down to the floor and say hey to Lauren Smith. Cheers, Joel. Yeah, I spoke to CrossFit Prestanda's Hannah Carlson a little bit earlier, and she said that whilst they had the goal of getting to the games, they gave no expectations on themselves going into the weekend. So to be sat at the top of the overall standings after three tests is amazing. She says the overriding motivation is to get Victor Langsved back to the games because after his disqualification last year, there's no one more deserving. And test four is going to work really well for them as a unit. That heavy dumbbell suiting all of their strengths. Lauren, thank you. 20% off Noble with a purchase of any 2023 Noble CrossFit Games semifinals ticket. Scan that QR code now. Schedule here on Friday, 2 o'clock for Team Test 4. We'll roll that back into individual competition starting at 3.30 and 5.20. Those times are local Central European summertime here in Berlin. The 2023 Noble CrossFit Games European Semifinal is brought to you by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Rogue, don't weaken. Strivey, elevate your remote coaching to the next level. GoWide, the mobility app designed for athletes. And Foodspring the brand for healthy, functional fitness food with great taste. The intensity and the effort that the athletes bring to the test is the test. I use this analogy all the time. You have, you have a 100 meter dash. It's super compelling and super exciting, but nobody's concerned about the athletes making the distance. The challenge of the test on its face is not what makes it interesting. It is the intensity and the effort and the application 
that the athletes bring to it that makes it compelling. And I think that should be true for most of the events at the games. You gotta go fast and you gotta look heavy if you want to get yourself into contention for that podium position. And come, it's absolutely necessary at some times to put out a test that's a little bit beyond where the current field is and, and have them reach for that. But it shouldn't be all the time. The intensity and the effort that the athletes bring to the test is the test. CrossFit Games, in my opinion, is like the promo package for what's possible. Most folks in an affiliate work out one time a day for one hour a day, where the CrossFit Games competitor is obviously trying to increase their capacity, but for a dramatically different goal. They are literally trying to become the best athlete on the planet. They're trying to establish functional dominance over other competitors, where one here inside the affiliate is trying to maximize their capacity and be competent outside the walls of the gym. The games probably have helped push everyone a bit more forward because people have started seeing like what could actually happen. What happens at the games is just an extraordinary version of what happens inside ordinary affiliates, where they're coaching athletes to move well, to move fast, to progress in terms of their strength and their skill and their aerobic capacity, the way they move their body. And what you see at the games always inspires a different training approach in affiliates. So what you'll see on Sunday at the finals when we're crowning the fittest men and women on broadcast television worldwide, will also be taken down to a local affiliate level. Those movement patterns will be broken down and they'll be instructing ordinary athletes how to perform those same movements, maybe a little lighter or fewer reps or less load, but that same movement will start bleeding into ordinary affiliate training. The CrossFit Games is where the CrossFit community or affiliates can see the peak of fitness on full display. The best of the best do what we do within our affiliates every single day, but a, a level and a degree that probably shouldn't be tested within our affiliates, but they need to see it there to know what people are capable of. It doesn't matter what sport you follow, you can find a highlight reel and you look at that and you're like, man, that is just the coolest thing ever. The difference with our sport is that you can actually go and like do that thing and it's gonna have a positive impact on your life. You're gonna get fitter and healthier and better, more able to handle everyday life. And you never even have to get close to what those guys out there on the field are doing. So to me, it's an inspirational, aspirational highlight reel for everybody else to get fired up to commit to another year of training. And then that cycle comes around, you see what those guys are doing, you're like, holy crap, that's the coolest thing ever. And I want to get in there and get my training taken care of.
10 seconds. Stand by. Relax, relax. to test number four here of the teams presented by Food Spring. We have a pairs workout. Pair number one, we'll start with 10 and seven calories on the row. They will have 10 each synchro alternating double snatches at 90 and 60 pounds and 15, 24 inch each box jump alternating. Then the second pair, We'll start off with 10 and 7 cows on the ski. 20 each dumbbell alternating snatches at 70 and 50 pounds. And then a 10 inch, 30 inch box jumps alternating. Both pairs finish around to be able to switch. As you will see one pair do three times the rower and the other pair will do three times the ski. Semi-final season, European semi-final underway. This is day two for our team division. They came out and saw two events yesterday. They had one earlier this morning, and now they're looking to close out day number two for the team con competition with some heat behind it. This event, they are meeting at the red line before they swap sides. So we can already see uh, both sides of the field already starting off as most of the athletes there on that first pair on that, that round on number two, we've had a first switch up. Let's not forget that this workout test on number four powered by Food Spring. Every single time you get through each one of those rounds, you have to switch with your pair, but you cannot switch until both pairs have finished the complete movements. Ladies and gentlemen, we got some swap outs over in lane number two. It looks like they are just moving in to round number three. That's CrossFit 10K Capital. Excuse me, CrossFit Kane. Yeah, the French team really starting to throw it down here. Here we can see the Spanish team out of Barcelona as well. As we see uh, C23, uh, CrossFit training. No, te dale duro, dale fuerte. This event has that 15 minute time cap, a little over four minutes in here. Our leading, our leading teams in round number three, 
They're doing five rounds for time. And we can see over there also Kiki lane number five, the CrossFit Oslo Pink Panthers. As you can see the athletes back there on the rower, that means they have done a full switcheroo. The pairs that are on the rowers at the moment will row three times. And the guys and girls that are over here on the skiers will do the skier three times. This is your test number four here of the European semi-finals. You can see our leaders in lane number three, CrossFit Butcher's Lab, Team Bjornfar. Looks, Looks like, like they will be the next pair, pair. meeting at the line. Keep in mind, you can't swap to the other side until the other partnership meets you there, and then you can hot tag it over to the other side. Uh, as you're saying, Kiki, it's kind of like meeting each other at the red line. That is going to be the meeting point here of this semi-final. And it is a CrossFit Kyan over there in lane number two. Looks like our current leader is on the floor. But watch out, because in lane at number three, Butcher's Lab. You are right about that. Butcher's Lab is leading the charge in lane number three. I've got my eyes on those little placards, seeing who's going to flip into the fourth round next. It looks like lane number four, Studio CrossFit, moving into their fourth round. Yeah, we have lanes number three, your leader, number four, and Studio CrossFit over next to you, Kiki. At the moment, are our top three teams. 15-minute time cap for this workout. And I tell you what, they are pushing, pushing, pushing! C23 CrossFit Training North Hay moving into their fourth round. So they are sitting in third or fourth right now as they segue into that fourth. That's four out of five. So they're looking at two more rounds remaining, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you can see Butcher's Lab over here, lane number three, already making their way through on that fourth round as they are going up for those 24 inch box jumps, 15 repetitions at each athlete. Looking to get into that fifth and final round here. There we can see that hand in the sky, Kiki. At number three, Butcher's Lab coming, Lumino Uno. Butcher's Lab gets there. One of their pairings at that red line. The other team, or excuse me, the other partners, having to work with a little bit of a higher box there, as you can see. Trying to chase him is lane number four, Studio CrossFit. And we can see over here also Marina dándole duro 77 feet! All right, and there it is, the final switcheroo. Uh, your number one, the leader out there at the moment, uh, Butcher's Lab Unifa! Into that fifth and final round, like you said, Joe's got eyes on him. Lane number four doing the swap out as well. Studio CrossFit also in their final round. We are eight minutes and 30 seconds in. Yeah, Studio CrossFit coming out of Spain, Barcelona. All right, we've got one athlete done out of that lane number three leader. Already gone through those seven calories, Kiki. We've got our one and two, and then in third, in lane number nine, we have C23 CrossFit Training. Those are the three teams that are in their fifth round. CrossFit Butcher's Lab, Studio CrossFit, and C23 CrossFit Training. And here we can see Studio already going for it with those 70 and 50 kilo dumbbells alternating snatches as they are currently in third position out there at the moment. It's gonna be close, it's gonna be close. 
You're right about that, Joe. They gotta go. This is day number two. This is the test that will close out their day number two here at the European semifinal. They want to jump up that leaderboard coming into their final day of competition. This is the time to do it. A ver, Estudio Crossfit, no os oigo, dale ruido! Athletes, you are 10 minutes in, five minutes till time cap. And just about to finish this one off, uh, Kiki, as we already see, Butcher's Lab team, uh, Bjorn Afar, they've already finished on the ski side. And for the other athletes to make the jumps and come towards the new tag and they're at the red line. Semi-finals, Berlin. One more rep to go. Put your hands together for Butcher's Lab. Nicely done. We've got one team to the finish line. Here comes our next. That is Studio CrossFit. Two teams on those finishing mats. We're looking for a third. It might be lane number three, C23 CrossFit Training. Lane number five trying to get there as well. CrossFit Oslo Pink Panthers. Who's gonna get there first? Lane number nine, C23. Four minutes remain. Both of the Spanish teams getting in their second and third position, but we saw Butcher's Lab take the lead in this first heat of that test number four, powered by Foodspring, as we make our way through. Just a little bit over three and a half minutes to go. And in lane number five, Oslo Pink Panthers. We've got a hand up in lane number seven. Cross to Oslo Vamos with both of their teams at the box. One of their pairings completes their box jump. I believe they got a thumbs up from their judge and they'll run it in. Three minutes to go. And we got the final two reps over here. Lane at number two. Uh, holding out of France, we've got Cross Feeder Kyan. As they go on uh, for their final round uh, out here on the ski in the row. Just about to close it out uh, as we are 12 and a half minutes into this 15 minute workout. Crossfit Vondel Gym 3 gets onto that finishing mat. Two and a half minutes to go. Lane number six coming in. That's Crossfit 77 feet. They are done. One more team to go. Lane number two, Crossfit Karn. Berlin, we are way, way, way too quiet. Let's give a round of applause. I am on real here. CrossFit Kyan. Two minutes. They are working on their final round right here. Both of the teams on their dumbbells. Only three more reps over here, Kiki, as they're just starting to finish up on those uh, synchro alternating dumbbell snatches as we approach the final section of this workout. It's time to hippity hop and get over. Joe, they have a little over one minute to go. There it is, one minute, athletes. You have 60 seconds. We got five more reps over here as they're just about to finish off on the ski erg section. So that's going to be the first pair to finish it off as we go into 40 seconds. It looks like they got one of their pairings complete through those box jumps. 
Will we see another finisher? Let's help him out, Berlin. They have 30 seconds. Can they get the job done? 20 seconds. Ale, 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 ale. Athletes, you have 10 seconds. The judge's hand is in the air. Counting down, three, two, one, time. Close, but no cigar. That's a wrap for heat number one, day two of competition. Up next, heat two. One minute. Thirty seconds, all athletes in starting position. <laughs> 
10 seconds. Stand by. All right, and signing off with a little bit of rock and roller for this test number four, powered by Fruit Spring. As our athletes are starting off on one side, you have a pair. They have the 10 or 7 calories on the row. They move it over to the dumbbell snatches for 10 reps. And then they continue on to 15 24 inch box jumps. On the other side of the tracks, or the other side of the red line, we have 10 to 7 cows on the ski, 20 alternating dumbbell snatches, and 10 30 inch box jumps. Each pair has to finish to be able to do the old switcheroo, where we will see one pair do three times on the row, and the other pair three times on the ski. All of our teams just easing through uh, this round number one out of five. We've already got a few hands up in the sky, but it's early days, early days. I can see over here in lane number one at Yellow Belly CrossFit. Over there, Torre Barra. What's happening, your side, Kiki? Lane number nine looks like they're going to be doing the swap out as well. CrossFit, Torre Barra. Waiting on their team, so it's gonna go lane number 10, Crooked Lake CrossFit. But it does look like your current leader by a little bit is Butcher's Lab T-Bone. Hey yo, hey yo. These teams are looking to jump up that leaderboard, no doubt. This is the close of day two for our team division. They've got just two more workouts tomorrow before we find out who's going to Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah, those 10 spots, those 10 spots. To be able to get that ticket all the way over across the pond to the Noble CrossFit Games. And they're making their way forward over there, Kiki. There we go, round number two is underway as we look at the sea of dumbbells. We're working on those dumbbell snatches going from ground to overhead. Lane numbers four and five. First of the box jumps, that's CrossFit Butcher's Lab T-Bone and CrossFit Oslo Rub Rebels. They've got their first pairing on that lower box. So does lane number seven, CrossFit Bladen. Center stage, center stage seems to be where it's at at the moment. And there are five rounds of workout to get through inside that 15 minute time cap. It's a whole lot of crisscross jumping around going on. Lane four with their first pairing done. So is lane number seven. That's Butcher's Lab and CrossFit Bladen. Looking to their teammates to get done with those taller box jumps. And then as soon as they can, they meet at the line and swap it around. do -si do going. Ah, Looks the good old switcheroo. Sorry, Kiki, the good old switcheroo. And we can see lane number four, Butcher's Lab T-Bone, already starting out for another round. There we go. It's a wave of bodies, like the parting of the sea. <laughs> parting of the fitness sea, I guess as they swap sides and get back to those ergs. We've got concept two rowing happening on one side, the ski erg on the other. Four and a half minutes in towards that 15 minute time cap. All right, so lane number four, Butcher's Lab T-Bone. Your current leaders are center stage. But there we can see in lane number three also, 
West Leader, CrossFit Shire Fit. Those judges keeping a watchful eye on those snatches. The dumbbells making contact with the ground, and then they pop it up, and they're looking for full extension of the knee, hip, and arms with that dumbbell straight overhead. Once they get to that, it's on to the box jumps. They're jumping high, and the judges are looking for those hips to be open at the top for each and every one of those box jumps. If not, they get themselves a no rep. But ain't nobody got time for a no rep here as we're five and a half minutes in. These teams looking to close out round number three right here. All of our teams are in round number three of five. This is heat two, test four. Day two at the European semifinal. Your current top two teams out there on the floor. We have in first position, lane number four, Butcher's Lab T-Bone, followed very closely in lane number five, by the Oslo Rebels, but Butcher's Lab is going ahead in the lead. Butcher's Lab's followed closely by lane number five, CrossFit Oslo Rebels. And then we've got about three other teams joining in at the same time. So we've got our one and two, a three-way dance with, between a few of those teams for third. Six and a half minutes in as they begin and dig into round number four. Oh, I tell you what, Kiki, these guys and girls are absolutely pulling on the ski egg. Ripping it out on one 1,500. There is no pain, no gain out here on the floor as now it starts to get a lot closer. As we can see on the ski egg side, the teams are pretty much rep to rep. We are seven minutes in, seven minutes in. Crooked laid CrossFit over in lane number 10. CrossFit Tordambara in lane number nine. All eyes on those snatches. However, lane number four, CrossFit Butcher's Lab, T-Bone. We've been saying their name quite a lot, and that's because they've been leading the charge. But it's been lane number five that's been trying to catch them. That's CrossFit Oslo Rebels in the blue and black. Yeah, Tordambara there. I can see El Gigante de Alicante pushing his way forward. And some of the classics, a little bit of Beverly Hills Cops coming out there from Enzo Smile, making sure our athletes are pushing forward as we've just gone over the eight minute mark. The competition is fierce here at the European semifinal. Lane number four moving into their fifth and final round. CrossFit Butcher's Lab, T-Bone into that final round. Here comes lane number three, so a little bit of a shuffle up. Lane number three, we have West Leeds CrossFit Shire Fit. And I tell you what, Kiki, over here, lane number one, a yellow belly CrossFit also in the mix. Looks like we had a little bit of a shuffle up there, Joe. Ah, the good old switcheroo, the good old switcheroo. You know it ain't over until the buzzer. Nine minutes in, less than six minutes to go for our teams. We'd love to see all of them finish and get across that line. But they got to do the work. They got to hustle hard. And over here, Yellow Belly CrossFit, lane number one. Looks like they have the upper hand on the left side. But let's not forget, the round only finishes when both sides meet at the red line. Lane number one, Yellow Belly CrossFit. 
with their first pairing on that lower box. Here comes lane number four, CrossFit Butcher's Lab, T-Bone. Same story, but it looks like they have both of their pairings at the box jump, giving them the edge in lane number four. 10K Capital pushing hard as well, but the battle looks like it might be here in the middle. As Yellow Belly CrossFit are both hop, skip, and a jump. Who's it gonna be? Lane number four with their judge's hand in the air. They might have both of their teams done first. They look to their partners. I got a lane, I got a hand in the air over here, four reps. The first spin is gonna be the team. Who is it gonna be? Butchers Lab! Followed by lane number three, West leads CrossFit Shire Fit. CrossFit Oslo Rebels gets across the line. And it looks like lane number one is done as well. You let me know, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. Yellow Belly CrossFit also getting across the line. There's been going to be some photo finishes. This is the closest one we've seen so far. And also the Oslo Rebels. And Cross there we can see. Nevada. CrossFit Toronto Nevada gets across lane number six. CrossFit 2650 gets across the finish line as well. Little bit less than four minutes to go, athletes. CrossFit Blade N is done. We have two teams remaining. Just waiting out here on those jumps. We can see a hand in the sky as they're just about to finish. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for CrossFit Sports. Berlin, a big round of applause to all of our teams.
20% off NobleProject.com. For those that have purchased a ticket to the Berlin semifinal, your code will be emailed to you after the conclusion of semifinals. Back at Max Schmeling Hall in Berlin, Germany, it is Team Test 4, Heat 3, here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Semifinals. Day two of competition for the teams. Lauren Smith down on the field of play. Mads Jacobson, Joel Gadet, the rest of our crew. Glad to have you along with us here for Team Test 4. Five rounds for time, but Mads, the way it works, it's going to be a little bit unbalanced in terms of the work that each person does. It will be. One team is going to be on the rower three times, another on the skier. That's perfectly fine. You just need to kind of, uh, well, you, you, just, you just need to balance your team out to where they're the best. Recipe for success as we look toward test number four. Mads, what's on your radar? Well, first of all, I want to see, I want to see them find the synchro, the synchro rhythm pretty fast on the on the dumbbells. It makes all the difference. We saw in the previous heats as well that that's where you can really make a move. Then fast transitions. Don't take it easy once you've completed your task and you move between the dumbbells and the box jumps. There's a sense of urgency all the way because there are some seconds to be made up there. Start list here for heat number three. Half of the field has already gone. Eight in heat one, 10 more in heat two. And then our third group here in heat number three with CrossFit T manning the middle of the field. CrossFit Senegalia had a tremendous performance yesterday on test number two, earning their way into the back half of heats here on day two of competition. Talked about CrossFit Porti in lane five. First finished team ever to the games, trying to make it three in a row. Well, they did an amazing job last year, and I think it's cool that they're all coming back. This is a completely different way of testing their capacities as a team and as individuals. So let's see what they've got this year. And we are joined here for test number four by the director of competition, Adrian Bosman. Adrian, welcome up with us. Uh, walk us through what it's like when you design these tests and you design these events as a whole to show up on site and watch it come to life in front of your eyes. Well, I think the first thing that's really cool is just it, it showcases the athletes, and that's what they're here to do. Really, it brings the whole thing to life. You can look at something on a piece of paper. You can document it as best you can. But until you see the athletes attacking it, you never really get a sense of how it's going to turn out completely. And so it's always a pleasure to see that come to fruition and to see these athletes pour themselves into it. I think it was a really, really cool comment that you made that it is all about the athletes and the intensity that they bring to the test that you come up with. It can be done in a million different ways, but if they don't go out there and add that magic, then what is the test? Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, you know, something can look cool on paper. It can have a flashy setup. But at the end of the day, it's the ability of the athletes that really makes things shine. And that's what we're here to see is, is how well-rounded all of these competitors are. That's the name of the game. And that's what's so impressive about the average CrossFit athlete today is they are capable of so many different things. Time cap here in test number four, 15 minutes has not been a huge factor in the first couple of heats. When you look at things like time caps, things like test construction, all of it, particularly when it comes to teams, what's different, what's unique, what's difficult? Well, there's certain things that you want to make choices about. And so if we go back to the event that they did this morning, you know, that time cap is really there to provide a test for them to try to best. And so it's not a lot of time. Most teams aren't going to make it through. That's a deliberate choice. You really have to race to try to get through to the end. This is a different kind of uh, test here. In this test, most teams are going to finish under the time cap. And that is exactly what was wanted. We want most teams to have to race through it. And we want most teams to get across the line. It's Let's also, for something like this, there is a scoring consideration around that, where if we have a lot of teams that meet the time cap, it can be difficult with so many reps to tabulate that quickly, and the results take a little bit longer as a result. What's unique to teams? When you sit down and you're looking at 40 people on the field of play, a ton of machines, a ton of weights, a ton of movement, versus an individual competition, is it more fun? Is it more challenging? Is it all of the above? Oh, I think absolutely all of the above. I mean, you've got a lot of variables to work with, which makes it a fun challenge. And as you can see with this particular test, you know, everybody's moving all the time. And this is very much like an all gas, no brakes type of team event. 
and it can be difficult to make that work with so many people on the field at once, and that's what I really wanted out of this one. Everybody has to push the pace. There's no way that you can be a little bit slower than even one member on your team and still come out ahead. And is that is that something that you take into consideration where it's like, okay, I need to see team strength, but I also see the, need to see the individual parts, but do you start with the stimulus that you're looking to, to, to test? It can be a little bit of both. And so for this one, like I said, it really was just, hey, let's get a straight up engine test. How do we make that happen so that the team has to stay in constant motion or near constant motion for the entire duration? I've got to ask you a crazy question, though. I like those do, are the best kind. <laughs> but do, do, do you try the do you do the workouts or the, yourself before they become events, before they could become actual tests? Uh, not beforehand. I'll play around with with certain elements. You know, I'm not the fittest guy around. I do OK. But <laughs> but so, you know, I'm not I'm certainly not a litmus test for what these athletes are capable of. But it is kind of fun to see how different things pair together. And, it you know, there is a visceral element to that. And it does help to put yourself out there and, and kind of feel what is it like to transition from one of these pieces to the next. So I do, in that sense, play around with it. And I will say, after we tested this one in particular, uh, way back when we were putting the semifinals together, this was the one that, after all the athletes went away for the day, the staff kind of looked at each other and were like, we're doing that one, right? And so <laughs> we, we tried a scaled down version of this, and it was a lot of fun. It's actually, it's funny that you say that, because I think when we went through these tests for the first time, I looked at this one and I actually went back to the person who programs it, the affiliate I belong to back home, and I said, once the workouts were announced, can we scale this into something we can do as a partner workout on Saturday? Because this is something I want to do. How much of this turns into, let's test the elite at this level, but also create something that people can take back to their boxes at home, and let's do this and get fit like the people we watch on television? Well, it's definitely a little bit of both. And, and that's kind of the beauty of having athletes that are so good is that re almost regardless of what they have in front of them, they're going to take it to a level that's way beyond what the average person is going to do. It. And that could be something simple or that could be something that's really set up at that level. It's not that it doesn't matter, but there's kind of a contrast there. Uh, but yes, it is absolutely a lot of fun. And I think that's what makes CrossFit as a sport really unique is that so many people, whether they're competitive minded or not, they want to get their hands on this, uh, this stuff. And that, I think, is a lot of fun to see it kind of percolate into the community and to see people really adopt it and, and just give it a shot. We had a, we had a group of four individuals who are not competitive athletes in any way, shape or form who did this at home. Are you one of the four? No, I was not. Just checking. And I'll get back to that in a second one. But it was amazing to see the results that they had compared to the results that the teams had, not in terms of how tired they were, but the stimulus they got afterwards. You have eight people who are living in completely different er different ends of the realm, so to, so to speak, but they both got the same out of it. I was not on there, so I did it with a friend of mine where he started on the rower, I started on the skier, and then we tried, and then we joined the conversation. That was, it was very, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, right on, I'm glad. And that, that makes me really happy. I think that's the biggest compliment that you can be paid is when people want to try these things out. That's such a huge, huge thing because it does take action to do that. It's not something that's just passing. Five minutes and 30 seconds into that 15 minute time cap. Again, time cap not having been a problem for teams here on test four. Everybody working to the middle in this test. You start at your machine, you move to your dumbbell snatches, you go to your box jumps, you meet at that red line and switch at checkpoint Charlie here and then move back to the machine and come on back in. Let's go down onto the floor here real quick. Check in with Lauren Smith. Cheers, Joel. Yeah, so Butcher's Lab Krieger currently in the lead. They had a really frustrating test three. I chatted to their coach, Philip Viscard, and he told me what he told them before they went out on the floor, and that was, you can't let the last test influence your next performance. Stick to your strategy and make sure you keep a cool head. It seems to be working. Lauren, thank you. you know, Adrian, let's talk about that a little bit. Because when you let one test influence the next one, how do you approach this as a programmer? Yes, there are seven on the individual side tests, on the team side, six tests. You can put them in any order. How do you arrive at the order that you put them in and what that does to coaches and athletes from a planning standpoint? Well, yeah, that's a good question. And I think if you're looking at the competition as a whole, it needs to be holistic, for lack of a better term. 
the things that you choose need to work well with one another. And that goes across the entire competition and that also goes day by day. So you don't want a ton of movement overlap from one test to the next in the span of a single competition day. Uh, that allows the athletes to be a little bit fresher when they come out. It, uh, it just keeps things a little bit more um, exciting as well because they can really get into that test if they're not already pre-fatigued from something earlier. Do you like to test something in, a, in, in the first test of a day and see how teams will bounce back and test two? Uh, sometimes, and I think that was definitely a factor on day one. The first test that they had was pretty grueling, and that was intentionally to see who could recover and come out fresh for the next one without a lot of rest. I mean, the teams on, on day one in North America and Europe, their competition schedule only allowed for about an hour and 45 minutes of rest before they were back out on the competition floor. So yes, that was a deliberate choice to see, okay, who can get juiced a little bit and then come on out and swing for the fences. Butcher's Lab Krieger was on the left side of your screen there right now leading this heat. They came in in 15th place overall, 25th in test number three this morning. Also keeping an eye on Aylesbury. They were a games team just two seasons ago trying to make it back to Madison here. Midway through, at least from a time standpoint of test number four, everybody is on either round four or round five here in heat three. We have one more heat to come. Adrian, I'm wondering, so do the experiences of what happens from these semifinals all over the world play into the programming at the games, or is that pretty much already set? Oh, it's definitely a combination. I mean, the games is a complicated beast. We have a lot of concepts that are laid out, maybe not in totality, but they are there in spirit. And you, yeah, absolutely, you take a look at the results of some of these, and that provides the final layer of detail. How did they respond to some elements in this stage of competition? And that can really put a punctuation mark on what we choose to do at the game. So the fundamentals are there, and then the finishing touches are absolutely informed by semifinals. Which concepts for the games? <laughs> oh, I can't go that far into I figured details. it was worth a shot. <laughs> it's, like, it's like opening your Christmas presents early. I can't yeah. do that. Uh, what do you do now between, this is the, the end of semifinals after this week, how do you guys ramp up for the games as a team? And you know, when Mad says what has been done at this point, uh, is it a lot of finishing touches? Is it a lot of reworking? Do you deliberately leave certain things for this juncture? Well, it's a lot of meeting. It's a lot of getting the teams connected. You know, obviously there's a lot of different elements that need to come together come games time. Uh, from the broadcast to the equipment team to the athlete control teams, etc. And so really it's just trying to preload with as much information as we can to those teams without letting the cat out of the bag too early. So it's a bit of a challenge. How about that baseball slide for a Heat 3 win unofficially in 942 for Butcher's Lab Krieger. Butcher's Lab has shown out very well. We have two affiliates that have 10 teams combined here at this Europe semifinal. That's between CrossFit Oslo and CrossFit Butcher's Lab. And Adrian, we're back in Europe at a live CrossFit run semifinal event. What's it like to have that presence again? And for a lot of people in Europe, this is their games. It's not as easy to pick up a ticket to Madison, Wisconsin. To feel that energy has meant what to you? Oh, it's incredible. I mean, it's been a while since we've been back here in this capacity, and you can really feel the enthusiasm. You know, Europe always brings it. It is awesome to see the enthusiasm and just, it's infectious. You can't help but not feel amazing when you're walking around this venue and you're just seeing how great people are uh, and, and their approach to CrossFit and lifestyle and everything. So it, it really is an awesome thing to kind of soak up. 941 for Butcher's Lab. Krieger, that is currently first in the event. Aylesbury came in in 1007, second in the event. Then Porti, who we saw earlier, in third in 12.23. I, I think this is the second t-shirt I've seen you wearing today as well. And I know it's an affiliate that's about a mile away from here. So is this a chance for you to also drop into some different affiliates, pick up some swag, represent, meet some people? Absolutely. That's one of the most fun things about getting out there is to go visit different affiliates and see what they emphasize and see how they manage their space and their equipment and all of that. Um, and shout out to uh, Grenzganger CrossFit. I think I said that right. He did. They were navigating classes of 40 and 50 people. They did an awesome job opening up their doors to the community that's coming through Berlin. Very, very cool to see that. Can you secret shop or does everybody know who you are when you walk in? Oh, I try to keep a low profile, but, uh, you know, usually people... 
people have an idea. <laughs> it's kind of like when you see Andre Houdi and he says that he's going to fly under the radar with his team. It's like, that's yeah, not going to happen. Exactly. No. Man, I want to talk about that 941. That's an impressive <laughs> time. That is going to be hard to beat in this fourth heat. I was going to say, what's really interesting when you saw that time was obviously they're, they're fast on the dumbbells, they're fast on the rower and the skier. But if you looked at the box jump, they were, they were switching so fast between them. We're not waiting for the other athlete to come down and the judge's hand to go up. It was like literally one athlete leaping off and the other one was in the air already. Yeah, no hesitation. That takes a lot of trust to know that your teammate is going to be out of the way when you're <laughs> yes. coming up real hot on their heels. But I think that's what happens when you, have, when you see these tests in different areas of the world. You see different teams who do it and then you have a, you have a couple of weeks to try them out. That's one of the things that should be coming out of that is just trust. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, these, these guys going in week three, they do have the benefit of a little bit more polish maybe than some of the teams in the earlier weeks. But Butchers at Priya have got to be incredibly happy with that. They didn't have the start yesterday, yesterday that they really wanted, and which is why they're in this heat, but they're doing all the things they need to do in order to move themselves into contention. Sub 10 minutes, that's, that's brutal. Yeah. Orhus has finished. And that makes it all but one of the teams in this heat is Bad Beast. Still trying to wrap things up here. 13 minutes in, Bad Beast came in in 14th place to start the day. Had a 27th in event one. There's the sprint with the time chip to finish things out here in test number four. So all wrapped up in about 13-17 unofficially with three heats in the books. And Butcher's Lab are on the feet. Anyways, it, right after they were done, they were uh, they looked pretty taxed. I mean, they look pretty happy now. So if you look right in the middle of your screen right now, this is them finishing. This is them coming off of the box jump. So even on the last ones, there was still that element of trust and that timing between the two athletes. And then that led them to where we are. This is awesome. 941 for Butcher's Lab Krieger. Adrian, you saw 941 and were, uh, <laughs> you're, you're warming yourself by the fire here. Uh, how does that compare to what you expected? Oh, man. I mean, you know, a 15-minute time cap, we knew it was going to be a little bit generous, but that is defying expectations right there to go sub-10. Very impressive. I, I thought we would have a few teams around the world that did that, but there's been a handful, and they are very impressive to be able to come out and swing like that. They missed the event record by, oh, goodness, now I set myself up for math. Uh, like a couple hundredths of a second. Wow. <laughs> nice. East Nashville proven did it 941.42 oh. instead of 941.57. Wow, so impressive. And you, you were saying, Mads, that they were up and walking around and feeling good. It's like, well, yeah, no wonder. They've had minutes to recover already on, <laughs> on the next teams. <laughs> well, let's just say that after we tried the scaled version in a pair of two, I was not up work walking after a minute or two. But then again, given I'm also not qualified to walk onto that floor as in the capacity as an athlete. I, I had a similar experience. <laughs> but if you are a part of CrossFit uh, Butcher's Lab Krieger team, then you should absolutely be proud of what you just did. It kind of puts everything into perspective. And yes, you are on the right path. Heat number four is coming up. Adrian Bosman will stick around with us up here in the booth. We're getting set for that final round for the teams here on test number four. Europe semifinal in the 2023 Noble CrossFit Road to the Games.
after this will be through two thirds of the competition for the teams here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit semifinals in Europe. Alongside Mads Jacobson, Lauren Smith, our eyes down on the floor. My name is Joel Gadeck. Glad to have you along with us. It is heat four, test four for the teams. These are the standings coming in. The Swedish super team, CrossFit Prestanda, a three point lead over CrossFit Trondheim. 10 teams from this semifinal heading to the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. And Mads, we have five rounds here and 15 minutes with which to work. We do. Pair one will do rows, synchro, dumbbell snatches, and then onto uh, box jumps. Pair two will do ski uh, calories on the skier, then onto their dumbbells, and then onto their box jumps. Then the male-female pairs will switch. They will do so for five rounds. Time cap is 15 minutes. Recipe for success presented by RP. Need to find the synchro rhythm and they need to find it fast on the dumbbells because that is where you can lose some time, not necessarily win it. On the box jump, same thing. Need to be synchronized and well-timed. And that if you do so, it's not gonna cost you as much energy and you're gonna be really, really fast. Last one is the transitions. Hurry between the different moves or the different elements. Odds on favorite coming in in lane two. CrossFit Oslo, Navy Blue stumbled out of the gates yesterday. They come back with an event win today in event three, trying to set themselves up for a really strong finish. Let's introduce the third member of our crew. Hey, Lauren Smith. Hey, Joel. Yeah, completely correct. That event win this morning has put them back into the top five, which is really important because two out of their four are like managing their injuries throughout the weekend. You have Avin, he has got a little bit of a hip injury. And then of course, the back injury of Billadale as well. So this is all about damage limitation. Secure that ticket to the games. They're not going for a big clean sweep of the weekend. Let's just get to Madison, shall we? Avin Dalreen guard on the right side of your screen. Nikolai Billadell on the left side of your screen. We really saw a struggle with that sandbag and the breathing that it interrupted for him. Adrian, is it interesting for you as Adrian Bosman joins us, the CrossFit Director of Competition, to see the impact of different events on athletes, particularly that sandbag, because I know you expected that to be an interesting obstacle. Absolutely, that sandbag stole a few souls out there and, and that was exactly what it was meant to do. You know, one thing that is really difficult for teams to train for is that static hold at a high heart rate. Not, not a lot of people do that, and so it can really catch you by surprise. And it can be really hard to recover from, and, and that's what we're looking for as part of the test. And we did talk to a couple of the teams yesterday afterwards, and they were saying that obviously they tried this at home, but it's just, it took a little bit, a little bit more intensity, just a bit more, and it became a completely different beast. Some had gone a little bit faster that they wanted to, and, and then they saw other teams they wanted to catch. And some were just out there trying to maintain the position, but they got onto that hole a little more tired than they have been. Just yeah. kind of goes, like, they're riding that line pretty, pretty, uh, pretty tightly. Absolutely, and I think two things that you can't replicate in the gym, no matter how hard you try, are competition intensities and racing other teams beside you. It's really difficult not to get pulled into somebody else's game when you see them moving ahead of you a little bit, or if you feel like you're behind. So it takes a lot of discipline, especially with a team, to stick to your own game plan. And, and sometimes that can sink you if you're not careful. It was CrossFit Trondheim, the first to make it to the dumbbell snatches here. One round is machine, dumbbell snatch, box jumps. You meet in the middle and switch. Once you start working after the switch, that is round two. So it is not both sides working on each side of the floor once. It is just five total rounds as you make your way through test four. Now a minute and 22 seconds in. Adrian, how do you approach building out these tests and incorporating different elements. You talked about what the sandbag was intended to do, and I think you are probably most noted for uh, ideating the capital event last year at the CrossFit Games, but second would be ideating the sandbag event on Saturday night. So when you're sitting at home, when do new implements, new ideas, new strategies come to you? Are you sitting down saying, let's be creative, or are you eating breakfast and something pops into your mind? You go grab a pen real quick to draw something up. It's absolutely both. And I like to think that I'm classic with a twist. I think that there's so much utility in just old school, classic CrossFit combinations. And those are my favorite workouts to date. However, you gotta push things forward. And especially at this level, these guys are all capable of things that are just a little bit beyond what they might train for. And so you have to give them just a little bit of spice sometimes when we get to the big show. Interesting point you brought up, and, and you talk about it in the commercial for the test is the, the intensity is the test. You say you, sometimes you have to come up with something that maybe pushes the boundaries beyond what people think they're capable of. 
how do you draw that line in your mind of what that is and how far people can go? That's an excellent question. I mean, a lot of it is just trying to stay familiar with the field. You know, you have to look at the, the global qualifiers, take a hard look at what they're capable of last season, anticipate that they're going to be training to push a little bit beyond that, and then offer that to them. So it's really just trying to stay familiar with as many athletes and as many teams as you can, and then making an informed choice based on that. If you, if you just had a look right now at Oslo Navy Blue, what I really like about this test is that it's great if you and your partner are fast, but if the other side of the house is not as fast, you're going to get to wait anyways. There's nowhere to hide. Yeah, exactly, and that's exactly what I wanted out of this test was a pushing up the pace. This is all engine, all gas, no brakes, and nowhere to hide. It really is just a big old engine test, and you want to see who can come out, keep the engine revving high, and just maintain that throughout the whole course of the test. Taking a look at Oslo Navy Blue here, Mads, you've got Leona Richter and Nikolai Biladell. Obviously, a lot of expectation on that team. Finished second at the games each of the last two years, and because of that, maybe the odds on favorite coming into this season. Adrian, when you look at this, you have to be more so than a programmer, a fan of the sport and the methodology as well. How exciting is it for you just to see how people respond to your creation from a fan's vantage point? Oh, it's great. I mean, it really does, uh, you know, pay testament to how good these athletes are and I think the broader community, how willing they are to engage with things that uh, seem appealing to them. And so, to me, part of the challenge is obviously creating something that's worthy of what these athletes are capable of, but something that also holds true to what CrossFit is and encourages people to kind of engage with it and get out there and try it themselves. And I think I, I think I told you earlier, before and after that, let's get into the test at hand, but I think I told you one of the things that I really appreciate about both the games programming from last year, all the programming that we've seen ever since, is that it kind of trickles down into the boxes, and we're seeing people come into the gym where it used to be, hey, I want a heavy snatcher, I want a muscle up, and now it's like, oh, I want to carry heavy things. I, I want to be able to do a handstand pirouette. That hasn't happened before. It has been a typical power output desire that we've had in a lot of people that come in, and I think we're seeing, starting to see a, a, a change or an addition to that and I really appreciate that, so thank you very much for that. Yeah, Makes my it pleasure. And, and I do think that that's been something that's a staple of the game since its inception is, you know, a little twist here and there in the games really does trickle down. I remember the first, you know, time that chest of bar pull-ups were put <laughs> into the games in 2008, and all of a sudden that was everything that uh, everybody trained for a year was chest of bar everything. You know, there was no such thing as a regular pull-up anymore for at least that year. Yeah. So that's nothing new. The CrossFit Games, I do think, offers kind of a beacon for uh, people to experiment with, with some things and try some things out that may be a little bit beyond what they're currently doing in their training. There's the switch. Ingrid Hodenmere making her way to the rower along with Nikolai Biladel for CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue. There are three Oslo teams in this heat. Six Oslo teams at this semifinal. That's a record for CrossFit competition. Adrian, who's the best affiliate? No, I'm kidding. I wouldn't put you on the record for that. <laughs> but what does it say to you that there are affiliates across the world now, be it Invictus, be it CrossFit Mayhem that sent three teams to the games last year, be it Oslo here, especially in Europe as, as the methodology grows, that this can happen, that you can have communities with this kind of fitness? Uh, it still blows my mind, you know. I've been lucky enough to be involved with CrossFit for a very long time now, and back in the dark ages, we didn't have affiliates all over the globe, and it was really just a young thing. People didn't know about it, people thought it was weird. They still probably don't know about it as much as uh, maybe we would like, and they still probably think it's weird, and that's fine. But the fact that you can walk into almost any corner of the globe th these days and find people that are doing this, either in an affiliate or on their own, it's a pretty amazing thing, and it really is a, a global phenomenon in my ex uh, experience. It's, it's, I don't know quite what to make of it, honestly. It still uh, is a pretty astounding thing to me. Yeah, the teams are really starting to rip into this contest right now. Andre Houdet of No Shorts CrossFit has watched every team heat at the games, at regionals, and at semi-finals since 2018. A very analytical, analytical way of preparing for Berlin. I mean, Adrian, how much in terms of trends have we seen programming change during that time? Oh, well, that's a, that's a tough question. I think that, uh, honestly, I might not be the best equipped to answer that. I think that other people's perception might be more insightful because, you know, the competitors are really dialed in. And when Dave was programming, I think obviously, you know, he had a ton of uh, pedigree there. 
and athletes had a long stretch to kind of get used to his rhythms. And so when I was put into that seat, I think no matter what I did, people were going to evaluate it as a, as a bit of a departure just because I'm different by nature. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question best. I think that's best served for the athletes in the community. What's your reaction to the preparation of Andre Houdet, having watched every event from every regional, semifinals, sanctional? Oh, that is <laughs> impressive. I mean, he, what a student of the game. That's uh, <laughs> good for him. I hope it pays off. But man, I am so impressed by this uh, this Navy Blue team here. This is they're fine. They have a sizable lead on the next teams. How about eight minutes and ten seconds in? 9:41 is the time to beat. The record between any semifinal event is that CrossFit East Nashville proven 941-42 on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. They got a move, but it is out there for the taking if Navy Blue can finish strong over the final minute and 10 seconds. Yeah, it's going to be close. They're coming down to those box jumps. I mean, they are flying through these snatches. It'll be exciting to see if they can take it. Hand was in the air on the other side for Richter and Dalringard. Philadel and Hodenmere here, also with the hand in the air on the lighter of the dumbbells. More reps, lighter weight, less reps, heavier weight. Similarly with the smaller box on this side and the taller box on the other side. All right. Again, that time to beat is 9.41. 42 would get you the best time worldwide. 9.41, 42. Yeah, they're going to be right down to it. I think they're going to be very close to taking this top time worldwide. Trying to catch who has the chip timer. It looks like it's on Avon on the far side of the screen. And they're coming down to the final reps here. Both judges' hands are up on, on the boxes. Well, we're done on one side. This should be a new worldwide record. If they can Maybe. get there. You're going to have to sprint. Daringard's got to go. Oh, and that no. time is going to go by. They are called back. Oh, man. Not only is it the best time in the world that goes away, it's also the test win at this oh. semifinal. Still a tremendous performance, but valuable miscommunication. It is a heat win, not a test win. And no shortcuts comes in behind them to finish second in the heat. And after that, we've got another Butcher's Lab Fleck team cruising in. And now we've got a foot race between Oslo Blackout and Pistanda. It was more of a crawl oh, race on the Pistanda side. And what, a little bit of a mistake there. I think their athlete thought that the white line on the field was yep. the finish and not the stop mat. So she was a few steps short, which is going to cost them a second or two. Still have some box jumps going to work. And Adrian, it's a 30-inch box for men and women, and I know you've pushed the boundaries a little bit on wall ball height, sometimes wall ball weight. Walk us through here on the final reps, going for that 30-inch box jump for both men and women. Well, I think that constantly varied is a big time tenant of CrossFit. Obviously, it's part of the definition. And I think that sometimes athletes get in their head that there's only one way to execute certain types of movements in competition, and that's not true. There's a whole range that can be expressed, and so they should be prepared for that. That was not Fleck, that was Genard. That was CrossFit Genard in lane number three. Uh, Fleck came in right afterwards. What's interesting as well is if you ask any of these athletes, where do I, where is the line prior to the event, they're gonna go, no problem, they got it, I'll tell you. <laughs> and then they're out there, suddenly heart, raise, heart rate is racing and, and you know, you're tired, you've been looking around, and suddenly you think it's the white line. It's not. Absolutely. I mean, that's what happens when you go full send. Is sometimes the brain isn't working quite as well as it was when you started. It's the ability to understand, to count, goes away, and then situational awareness. Here's that finish with Oslo Navy Blue. 9.51.99 is going to be the official time, and I think they were one. It wasn't that they were short. It was a no rep. Avon uh, Dalringard, I don't think, opened his hips completely at the top, so called back to finish that final box jump and it winds up costing them the event by 10 seconds. They still finish second. No shortcuts will finish third. Genas finishes fifth, third in the heat, fifth overall. Yeah, Everybody that. beat the time cap and uh, event uh, finish 28th is where Nymahan will finish to round out that heat. Son of a doubt, the, uh, the Danes and the Norwegians though, just cruising here in test four. 
Yeah, they're doing they're doing pretty good. Also, look at it at in fourth in fourth place, Aylesbury. Aylesbury are doing it right again today. Prestanda came in as the leader. They finished seventh. We'll see what the point tally does to that. Adrian Bosman, the director of competition for CrossFit and the CrossFit Games. Thank you, sir, for stopping by. We appreciate it. Absolutely my pleasure. Thank you, guys, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the competition. I think it'd be hard-pressed not to. <laughs> <laughs> Oslo Navy Blue started their weekend off on a very difficult note with that 12th place finish. They have bounced back fantastically, though, and they are down there with Lauren Smith. Cheers, Joel. Even that, that was incredible. Obviously, we've been talking about your injuries and, and how you're having to rally as a team, but to come into day two with a first and an unofficial second, how proud are you of this team? First of all, I'm going to say something in Norwegian to the guys back home. Hilsjem to Finnmark, Troms, Trondheim, Morsjøen, Bode, Bærum, Kristiansand, hele Røkla. Yeah, so coming into day two, we were really fired up, not feeling as confident as we used to do because we used to perform better but now when we've gotten a, an event win I think we got a second in this one because I messed it up on the last rep so I had to go back and forth I think that was the five seconds that took away the, the win on the last one but super happy and now we have momentum going into day number three and we're looking forward to come back and crush it tomorrow. Of course at strength and depth it was a clean sweep last year so you're very used to being on top how do things change when you're now hunting those top positions? I think this is very good for us. It's a kind of a new experience because usually we perform very well. So I think we challenge ourselves as a team because now we have to like trust each other to do better. So yeah, it's really good for us. Just to clarify, you are performing really well here as well. <laughs> we had a rough start. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Go and enjoy this one. Rough start is all perspective. As Jeff Adler would say, they can go enjoy some time in the jacuzzi. But those are the semi-final test four results. Another look at them. Butcher's Lab Krieger, nearly the worldwide best score between all the semifinals at 941.57. Oslo comes in second. We'll see the individuals on the stream for the first time. When we come on back next, we'll reset that floor. Welcome back to Berlin, moments away. Designed for athletes. Have a gym. The best gym floor for the most demanding training. And Strivey. Elevate your remote coaching to the next level. Do you have to be fit to start CrossFit? Oh, that's... So not true. I couldn't do one push-up. I couldn't run 400 meters. I was out of shape. I was almost 300 pounds. I heard of CrossFit, but I had no clue what it was. CrossFit showed me a whole new level of what my body can do. Nobody starts out CrossFit fit. You gotta start from somewhere. It just takes one day to go inside and try it out. One time, and then you'll know that you can. I just think that's such a cool shining light to see people that have navigated their life and still chosen to prioritize health and fitness in a way that isn't just something that's a passing interest when you're young. I think that's super powerful. I think it's really, really, really cool. And it's really important that um, people can look to that and say, hey, you know what, that could be me. There is a six word phrase that we say, uh, what is CrossFit? CrossFit is constantly varied functional movements that are executed at high intensity. Es una definición de cinco segundos que dice todo, pero no satisface a nadie. It's a strength and conditioning program that mixes weightlifting, calisthenics, powerlifting, running, rowing, biking, and a whole bunch of different ways so that you get a broad, broad, broad range of fitness 
and you're never bored with your workout because they're changing all the time. At the end of the day, it's just working out with a good bunch of people, having a sweat, letting off some steam, and getting healthier and sexier at the same time. It's family, it's community, it's fitness. It's a no BS approach to bettering your life, not only inside the walls of the gym, but also outside the walls of the gym. You have to realize that when you step into a CrossFit gym, you're not just seeing the fittest competitive athletes in the world. You're seeing athletes that are just like you or me. The beautiful thing about CrossFit is that absolutely anyone can do CrossFit, regardless of any demographic, age, ability level, or background. Todos não como pode, é como deve, né? It is designed for anybody to take part in. If I look at each individual person that walks in every single day here, it's like everybody's absolutely different. It could look like my 80-year-old dad. It could look like my kids. There's an option for you that fits you exactly where you are on your fitness journey. It'll meet you right where you are at, and it'll take you to places that you never even thought you could go in terms of your fitness. I've seen people change their life. I've seen people lose 50 kgs, relationships be created, babies being born from people who've met at the gym and they got married, etc. For me, CrossFit was to find a family outside of my house. <laughs> I, can, I can honestly say hand on heart that it will change their life. Not because it's just a fitness program, not because of the community, but because the greatest adaptation that occurs in CrossFit happens right here.
Ten seconds. Stand by. And a welcome to individual test number two presented by Strivey. In a three minute intervals, our athletes will be doing five ring complexes of one toaster ring, one muscle up and one ring dick, 20 single leg squats, and then a maximum number of burpees over the box. And all of this will be performed with a 10 pound, a four and a half kilo, a go rock rucksack, and a 24 inch box. These athletes looking to get to that box as quickly as possible. Like you said, it is max burpee box jump overs with that little backpack there. No, they are not going to school. Maybe the school of CrossFit happening here. They've got three minutes to get as far as they can down the line. One minute in, two minutes to go. The first athlete to make her way forward over there in the green coming out of Spain, Max Effort, Sara Lucia. Athletes, you are halfway, 90 seconds. Matilda Spanu over here, also lane number eight, making her way through her, but it is Sara Alicia and Matilda Spanu. Sara in the green, in the middle, lane number five. Matilda in the blue, lane number eight, your top two. And Jeremy Guerrero there, the French athlete over there. Lane number seven, your top three on the floor. Athletes, you have 45 seconds. The total score will be uh, the uh, maximum amount of burpees that they do uh, in uh, these uh, three, three minute intervals, a uh, one minute rest in between athletes. 30 seconds. Over here, lane number eight, it is uh, Matilda Spano, second position, Sada Alicia in the green in the middle. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, rest one minute. All right, so as it stands at the moment, it looks like very, very even playing field out on the middle of the competition lanes as we're waiting to see uh, the numbers on uh, those burpees. It looked like Matilda Spano in lane number eight and Sara Alicia in lane number five. 30 seconds. And also a big thank you to GoRuck for providing rucksacks to all of our athletes. Head to GoRuck.com if you want to get one and try uh, this workout for yourself, Berlin. Ten seconds. Stand by. They are back in action. Three rounds right here, getting a rest, minute rest in between. They're trying to accumulate as many reps as possible here. Obviously, they got to get through that little buy-in that complex that's happening before they can begin their max burpee box jump overs. And they're doing all those complexes out there with a 10 pound, four and a half kilo rucksack. Already seeing athletes going unbroken for those five complexes. But I mean the best of the best athletes out here down in Europe on the floor, Berlin. Let's give them some noise, give them some love. 
got a couple athletes on those one-legged squats. Trying to mitigate that pacing. They know that there's one more round after this. They are in round two of three right now. We are one minute in, two minutes remain, athletes. All right, so we can see Emiko Nats over here from CrossFit Manchester making her way forward as there's a nice battle in between lanes number nine and lanes number five. But Sara Alicia, the Spaniard in the green, lane five, your leader by one rep. Athletes, you are more than halfway through this round. Here we go, Joe. She is up and over. Ladies and gentlemen, she's got company over in lane number nine. Athletes, you have one minute. So let's not forget the total score of the burpee box jump overs are the ones that are going to matter. At the moment, it is neck and neck in between. Emiko Nats and Sada Alicia, but also joining in on the fun. We can see Madana in person also there. Athletes, you have 30 seconds. Come on, Berlin, let's help them out. Cheer on our athletes. In this middle round right now, they have 20 seconds. Number nine, yeah, your current leader in the blue, uh, Emiko Nats. Ten seconds. <laughs> Three, two, one, rest. One minute. As these athletes make their way back for that final three-minute interval, one minute rest in between uh, these rounds. And it's time to hit those five complexes, the 20 single leg squats, and then the final max burpees. At the moment, it is lane number nine. Emiko Nats coming out across here. Merch Tim, your current leader. Uh, we have Sada Alicia there, lane number 30 five. 30 seconds. And also in that lane number six, we can see Madeleine Pearson. But this is where it all comes down to it. The final countdown, final burpees. Ten seconds. Stand by. All right, so the final interval here for this test number two of the individual women presented to you by Strivey. This is their third and final round here. They just have a couple of minutes of work remaining on their first day of competition here. This is day number one, test number two for our individual athletes. They were in it for quite a while this morning with that endurance being tested. A little bit different here. They got to get a buy-in. They've got to be able to fly high and do that ring work. Some one-legged squats before they go all out on these max burpee box jump overs with that go ruck. Athletes, we are one minute in, two minutes remaining. Lane number nine, Emiko Nats making her way out in first position. And she is also your current leader on the maximum quantity of burpee box jump overs. And that 24 inch box and with that 10 pound, four and a half kilo, go rack on her back, making easy work of this test number two. Halfway.
All right, so at the moment we can see a uh, number one, uh, first position, Emiko Nats in the blue over here, lane number nine. Uh, I can also see over there, lane number six, your number two, uh, Madeleine Pearson. One minute. And uh, in uh, lane uh, number four, Nortia Blaker from No Shortcuts CrossFit starting to make her way forward. 45 seconds. So now this is what it's all about. Who is going to have uh, the highest number? The highest amount of those burpee box jump overs. 30 seconds. Hitting uh, the 30 mark over here. Berlin gives some noise up for Emma Konats. Athletes, you have 15 seconds. Make that 10 seconds. Three, two, one, time. And a big round of applause to our athletes. And the winner of that heat, lane number nine, Emika Nats, with 35 repetitions of the Murphy Box Jump Over.
10 seconds. Stand by. And we're off, starting off test number two, uh, powered by Strivey. We have three minute intervals with one minute rest in between, uh, where our athletes have to perform uh, five ring complexes of one toes to ring, one muscle up and one ring dip, 20 single leg squats, and then it's all about the maximum amount of burpees over the box with the little cats of they have a 10 pound or four and a half kilo go rock sack on their back. Right, just to add a little spice in there. Why not slap on a go rock backpack? We got a couple of players coming in to those one legged squats. Yeah, we can see Sepius over there, the Spaniard, Silvia Garcia Izquierdo, and then uh, Paula Sikorski. Your one and two, uh, Holly Tynan over here as well, and uh, Rebecca Vettersen. Two minutes remaining. Vitterson are loving the pistols, one of our favorite movers out here on the floor, making easy work, easy work. But as it stands out there with the colors. Halfway, 90 seconds, and at the halfway marker, Joe, these it, ladies know they gotta go. We have a battle on our hands, a center stage. Uh, Sylvia Garcia is getting the Paula Zikowski. Athletes, you have one minute remaining on this first round of three. It is pretty much rep for rep out there at the moment. But with a slight lead, Paula Siskowski, ladies and gentlemen, green center stage. Nicely done, moving down that line. Athletes, you have 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds to go. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, rest, one minute. So he got down at that first interval, three minutes of action out here on the floor. And now we continue on. They got a one minute breather to get a little bit of air and get themselves ready. Interval number two coming their way. 30 seconds. Where they will be repeating those five ring complexes, 20 single leg squats, and once again, uh, continuing on uh, with those uh, maximum amount of burpees over the box with the 10 pound uh, go rock on their backs. 10 seconds. Stand by. <laughs> All right, Zach Wild starting to get the beats and the grooves down here on the floor. Interval number two, uh, as it stands. It is Paula Sigolski with 17 repetitions, who has the highest total so far. But we've been saying it all day long, Kiki, it ain't how you start it, how you finish. Ain't that the truth, brother? Right now, these athletes are working in their second round of three. Lane number nine, Holly coming in for those one-legged squats right now. 
Or excuse me, Rebecca. My bad. Yeah, Rebecca Vitterson making her way through. I played it a little cool there on that first set. And now just easing through. And there we can see Sepia, Sylvia Garcia Izquierdo with all the colors over there. Lane number five. Seconds, athletes, you are halfway. All right, put your hands together, Bernie and Rebecca Vinterson. <laughs> and join her on the center stage. One minute. We can see uh, Sepia Silvia Garcia desde España. Ruido, ruido, ruido. Forty-five seconds. So it looks like Vinison is actually caught up and is now rep for rep on that total. 30 seconds. As we are on this second interval, one minute rest will be coming up and they will have at that third and final shot. 15 seconds. Athletes, you have 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Rest. One minute. That's interval number two in the bag. I should say out there in the go rock. And now we move on uh, to interval number three. Standing out on the floor with a one rep lead. Uh, lane number five, uh, Sylvia Garcia Izquierdo Sepius. Uh, Rebecca Vitterson over here in lane number 30 seconds. nine is coming in strong. Ten seconds. Stand by. All right, and they go into the final. Five complexes up there on the rings. Looking to see if someone is going to be making these ones unbroken. The top athletes in Europe out on the floor here for the CrossFit semi-finals. These athletes looking to close out their day. This is their second test of fitness, test number two. Heat number two is underway here. This is their final three minute round. I tell you what, Zach Wild getting excited over here, Berlin. Come on, put your hands together. Let's make some noise for these athletes. We're coming up on one minute in. Athletes, you have two minutes remaining. All right, so it looks like one more rep. I can see a single digit over there for Silvia Garcia Izquierdo Sepius. And Rebecca Vitterson taking a breather over in lane number nine. Your top two at the moment. Athletes, you are halfway, 90 seconds. Yeah, ahí está Silvia Garcia. And making her way through a sprint at the end, Holly Tynan.
athletes, you have one minute. It is basically going to be a sprint to the finish. One repetition separates Vitesen from the leader, Sylvia Garcia. But they both have to make it to the burpee box jump overs if they want to increase that score. 40 seconds. Athletes, you have 30 seconds. Ruido, 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 España, ruido, ruido, ruido. <laughs> 15 seconds. 10 seconds. This is it. Three, two, one time! I tell you what, I tell you what, it looks like waiting for official results, but it looks like we might have a tie in that heat in between uh, Sylvia Garcia and Rebecca Vinicius. Let's both give them a big round of applause, Berlin! Ten seconds. Stand by. And well, 
welcome, welcome, welcome Berlin to test number two of the individual women. Three intervals of three minutes with a one minute rest in between. They have to perform five ring complexes of one toast to ring, one muscle up and one ring dip. 20 single leg squats. And then it is a max burpees over the box. And the cats, they are wearing a 10 pound, four and a half kilo go rack. We got a couple of front runners, Joe. Yeah. yeah. We can see uh, Jasmine Van Arhem over there in the blue shorts, lane number six. And it looks like Norcia Bleeker, if I'm not mistaken, over there in lane number four. I apologize, it is uh, Julia Blazicowska in lane number three, also advancing her way through. Athletes, you're approaching the halfway point. There it is, 90 seconds. All right, so we pretty much got rep for rep here in the middle. In between, uh, Jasmine Mahama and Julia Blazajowska, your top two on the floor. Athletes, you have one minute. We've been seeing in between 13 uh, to 17 uh, burpees on uh, this first section, but we said it all day long. It ain't how you start it, how you finish. Three intervals in this test number two, uh, powered by Strive E. Athletes, you have 30 seconds. Twenty seconds. The leader number three, Julia Blazer Oscar. Ten seconds. Three, two. One rest, one minute. So a big shout out and thank you for Go Rock for providing all of our athletes with that little bit of added weight to their backs, 10 pounds to be precise. If you want to go and check out and get one of those Go Rucks to give this workout a try, I definitely recommend it. As we now have that one minute transition and we move in uh, to interval number two. Less than 30. <laughs> 10 seconds. Stand by. Ah, oh, now you're talking my language, Zach. Now you're talking my language. Starting to get the beats going. Second interval for those five complexes, Berlin. And these girls are making easy work of it out on the floor. Thirty seconds in. Two and a half minutes remain. We've been seeing these athletes get to that box at about the halfway marker, 90 seconds. We'll see if they're able to get there a little bit faster this time. Lane number three coming out. Julia Blazajowski. First to the one-legged squats. And we can also see over here, Aline Vietz in lane number nine, starting to get her pistols on. Two minutes remain. 
The judge is looking for that hip crease to go below the knee while that other foot stays off the ground. And them having to perform these ones unbroken so they cannot put down that second foot in between reps. So making it a little bit harder out there. But once again, lane number three. Halfway, 90 seconds. There we go, and there our first athlete is in round number two to the burpees, Julia leading the charge. Yeah, out in the purple, already hitting uh, that magic number 20. <laughs> Athletes, you have one minute. These athletes in that middle round right now. Trying to get as many burpee box jump overs as possible with 45 seconds remaining. And I tell you what, Kiki, we can see over here, lane number nine. We can see Alina Ritz making and playing catch up over there to lane number three. 30 seconds. Only four. Repetitions in between them, and they are starting to push the pedal to the metal. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, rest. One minute. as they make their way back for this one minute breather and they go and continue on uh, for the final interval of this test number two uh, presented by Strivey. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. You're looking at their last and final round right here, ladies and gentlemen. They've got one more three-minute segment to get as many of those max burpee box jump overs as possible. Our leaders with 30 and 34 reps right now. Yeah, we can see them starting to make their way through. Some of the biggest scores we've seen in the upcoming heat so far. Let's not forget we have six heats of the individual women coming out onto the floor as they have this final interval. Who is going to be coming off the rings in first place? Uh, Eileen Beers in lane number nine. First of those one-legged squats. We're one minute in, two minutes to go. And we can also see there Santa and Alainen uh, making her way and standing herself up. Athletes, you are halfway, 90 seconds. Now they're slowing down a bit, right? They must be a little bit tired because previously we saw them coming out right around that 90 second marker. Let's see what they can do with it here in this final round. I tell you what, those 10 pounds are gonna start feeling like 10 tons on their back. I'm sure. And Berlin makes some noise, starting to make her way to the murky Bob Sobers, Alina Bress. Athletes, you have one minute. She has an opportunity here 
to catch up on that lead. Your new number one, lane number nine. 45 seconds. Ah, Athletes Pistol Squad into the beat out here, Berlin semi-finals. 30 seconds. Twenty seconds. These athletes coming into their final ten seconds. Berlin, show them the love. Let me hear you make some noise. Three, two, one, time. The 2023 Noble CrossFit semifinals live here in Europe from Max Schmeling Hall in Berlin, Germany. It is test number one for the women earlier this morning. The 3,000 meter echo bike with the hand over hand sled pull and the 2,000 meter assault runner hand over hand sled pull. The 1,000 meter skier with the hand over hand sled pull. The women got after it, and Mads, we had some newer names, you might say, at the top of the leaderboard. I mean, we did, but we did see a lot of athletes who went out there and did a really, really good job. I think some of the uh, athletes in the later heats got a little bit surprised at how heavy that sled was, and that kind of opened up the door to some unusual suspects. Laura Horvath, who came in maybe as the favorite in this semifinal with a 24th place finished. Jennifer Muir wins 100 points for the young member of the UK. We actually saw multiple people from the early heats finish in the top five. Well, exactly. And I think they came out there and just got after it, it completely unapologetic. Uh, and I think that did him well. Medaline person, 97 points in second place. Of course, we expect great things from Gabby Magala. She comes in third, Amy Kringle in fifth, and then Caroline Miller Korn competing on her home turf here in Germany finished outside the top number to make it to semifinals originally. Some backfills wind up getting her here. A tremendous performance in test one. Manon Inganese is just on the outside looking in. As we get you set for test number two on the women's side. Looking at heat four of six. Lauren Smith down on the floor alongside Mads Jacobson. My name is Joel Godet. What are we looking at here, Mads? Well, we've got a we've got three three-minute intervals. We've got five ring complexes, 20 single-legged squats, and the rest of the time you've got max burpee box jump overs. One minute rest in between the uh, intervals. You see Jennifer Muir in lane three, coming off that event one victory. Emma McQuaid is one of the biggest names, and maybe the biggest name, however, in this heat. Well, she sure is, and she's joined by some of the usual suspects, to use that terminology once again. And uh, she's going to have to make a mark now. This all starts with the ring complex, toes to rings, followed by a ring muscle up, 
followed by another press out into a dip on the rings. Once you're done with five of those complexes, as Mads alluded to, it's to the pistols. None of that counts in your score. It's all about how many burpee box jump overs you can rack up. And not just that, if there is a tie break, the tie breaker is how many reps you got in the first interval. So you can't go out here and play possum in interval number one. You need to get after it in case you're tied with somebody a little bit later. Emma McQuaid there on the left side of your screen. Camilla Salenson Hellman. Now dead center on your screen out of CrossFit Walleye in Sweden. Oh. Trying to make a comeback after the birth of her son a year ago. Benji is 15 months old. Exactly. She had a great season, went to the games, did amazing, came back, had a son, and now here she is again. And one of the things you don't know about Camilla is that she's planned this season really, really well. She's kind of gone by feel, done what she does, but never wanted to negotiate with the fact that she needs to recover decently after her... Uh, after the delivery, so yeah. No, she's looking really, really good. And I think it gives her a calm as well. It's like you saw Annie, mama strength. Home turf strength here for Verena Evelyn Reimers, who began CrossFitting in Berlin at My Leo CrossFit, not that far from where we are today. She now trains out of CrossFit Oslo, and she is leading the pack, advancing every five reps of these single leg squats. Not a bad box to be from. I think we've seen some uh, pretty fairly good athletes from there as well. But Camilla Solomon Hellman in lane number five is the first one to the box jump overs. And if there's one thing about Camilla is that you're going to get two things for sure. She will absolutely tear herself to shreds for points. And secondly, she will she will be drama all the way. Just there's no two ways about it. She'll throw her hair, she'll sound, she'll do anything, but she's never going to stop walk working. Hand is in the air to move the box forward. That happens every 10 reps. So we'll be able to visually see the story of how far these athletes advance in the first of these three minute rounds. We'll then take a rest, reset, do it again. Take a rest, reset, and do it a third and final time. This opening stanza is critical because the tie break is what you do in the first round. And again, the burpees and the box jumps, that is the only thing that counts for points. It is, which is why it's, also, it's just so important to go out here and then spend that first minute you get and really try to get your breathing under control. Always important, but you have to push the pace in this, uh, the first three minutes. 10 seconds left here. If you move and you're going, you might be able to get three more. <laughs> but you gotta move. And now the chance to rest and recover and head back to the rig. All right, so the complete description again, it starts on these five three movement ring complexes. Although, Mads, you don't necessarily have to do them as a complex, total ring muscle up, ring dip one. You can drop and then continue by jumping back up. You can, and it's not a bad idea to do so. If you're, twi if you're questioning whether you can get an entire, an entire complex, do the toaster ring, jump off, get the muscle up, and then obviously get the dip, because otherwise you'd have to go through the muscle up one more time. Said the tie break score is the burpee box jump overs in the first round. So kudos to Camilla Selmanson Hellman, right now with 17 burpee box jump overs. Verena Evelyn Reimers, 14. Tied with Taylor Howe in second place. And if Benji is at home watching this, be proud of your mom. She's doing a great job. I don't know if Benji would know what he's watching. I was going to say he will know in the, t in the years to come. I really like what I'm seeing from Camilla right here. And I think we're seeing a couple of other athletes as well taking their time on that backswing for the, both the toes to bar and the, the muscle up. And exactly that's exactly what you need to do. That's just what you had talked about. There was a toter ring, then a drop. Yep. It's easier to do the muscle up fresh. So much easier. And especially, you know, on the first round, you can't do it. On the second round, if you want to preserve a bit of energy for that last sprint, then that's exactly what you need to do. Good kip of that ring dip. Taylor Howe in lane number six is doing a great job. And also in lane number one in the middle of your screen right now as well, Raymer's doing a great job. Marina Evelyn Raymer's 
First competition of this level in her career. She is the only athlete on the second five. Well, now Salmonson Hellman has joined her. Second set of five of the 20 single leg squads. Mads, this is a difficult movement. What are we looking for, standards wise? Well, so standards wise is obviously crease of the hip below the top of the knee. That's not going to be a problem for most of these athletes. The challenge is when you have is that you can't put down the foot that's not working, so to speak, but also you need to come up to full extension in the knee, full extension in the hip. That's where things get challenging, because as you want to go faster, you're going to want to not extend the knee, not extend the hip, especially when you're looking to balance that, that foot that's elevated. Salmonson Hellman has now passed Rymers. No, I think Rymers is on the box jump overs again. Salmonson Hellman is still on the pistols. We've got correct, Taylor Howell correct. is the one who makes it to the box jump overs first. Two more here before she can advance. Remember, she was in second place after round one with 14 burpee box jump overs. Oh, <laughs> Camila Solomons and Hellman is going out. She's a little late to the box. We had both Maribel Garardo and we had Ramos and we had Howe as well. But Camila Solomons and Hellman, once she got to the box, just going for it, which is exactly what she needs to do. Love it. You can see Salmons and Hellman in lane five, dead center of your screen. Green top, black bottoms. 10 seconds to get as many reps as you can get here before another one minute reset. And look at Camilla Salmons and Hellman. She was trying to go, lost her balance, but does pick up that final rep. That's exactly what she needs to do. There, you cannot stop here at any given time. I mean, one burpee can be the difference between whether you make it or not. So, absolutely, just don't stop until the buzzer. Let's go down to Lauren. So, Taylor Howe has traditionally always been called a strength athlete, and I know she absolutely hates it because she's worked really hard to round out her game. You might remember, she actually came fourth in the pistol muscle-up ward at Strength and Depth last year. So I think, given she thinks she's fully fit for the first time in three seasons, we are going to see big things from her in this final round. Lauren Taylor Howe is now in second place with 25 burpee box jump overs. She's two reps off Salmonson Hellman. But Howe had 11 in the last round. Salmonson Hellman only had 10. So Taylor Howe is getting stronger. And Taylor Howe, she may not like the fact that she's always been a strong athlete, but it helped her on the muscle ups. No big sense of urgency once you start these rounds, Mads. This is a deliberate, attentive pace early. It's not about coming out hot. Definitely not. I mean, that's the, that's the treacherous part about it. It's like three, it's a three minute interval, absolutely. But I mean, there are three of them. Get through the ring complex, clean, get to the pistols and then burn it <laughs> on the burpee box jump overs. And then recover really, 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 really fast because you need to do it again. How tricky is the one minute recovery? As you look at the top three in the heat, it, it's almost tricky, right? You get a chance to rest, but once you catch your breath, here we go. Exactly, it is really, really tricky. You need to kind of, you need to kind of get your mindset into, I'm not gonna be recovered. I will be able to get my pulse down just a little bit and get my breathing under control, but there's not gonna be, you're not gonna be recovered. Rymer's on the right side of the screen. It's Salmonson Hellman on the left, and then Taylor Howe in the middle. Got another oh. minute and 50 seconds. So Mary Bell got out of the end. Lane number seven is done with her complex. That's exactly what she needs because she was third coming onto the, the box jump overs in the previous hit, in the previous round. Now she's joined by Taylor Howe. 23 total burpee box jump overs for her. And Emma McQuaid. There she is, left side of your screen. McQuaid through seven reps of the pistols. Maribel Gallardo is on her final five, just got hit with a no rep, right side of your screen. Taylor Howe is next to her in the all black. 
Salmonson Hellman is stuck all the way back on the rings at this point. Remember, she was toward the front. This is going to ding her. And to the box jumps here for Gallardo. The number to beat is 45 by Aylin Verts. That was in the last heat. No one else has beat 35 at this point. So Verts has smoked this test to the field. But this is what it's all about. This is what I mean. I mean, you need to know how far you're going to be able to go and how fast you can recover. And now Camilla Solomons and Helma gets onto the pistols, but we've only got 15 seconds to go. This is a painful drag forward of the box. Taylor Howe had to do a lot of work to advance. And with five more seconds to work, we'll pick in one more rep. Taylor Howe is spent trying to clinch her first career ticket to the CrossFit Games. That may be worth it. And with Salmonson Hellman from the jump. That's about the feeling all around for Taylor Howe. So it was really, really hard. It starts out with a pull, then onto a push, and then another push. And that second push proved to be a problem to a lot of these athletes. As we saw to start with, Camilla Solomons and Hellman came out guns blazing, but got stuck a little bit on the last one. And so on the last round, that opened up the door to both Gallardo and to Howe as well. And they just absolutely tore it apart. Still looking to see what they got, but they did do a really good job at positioning themselves for uh, the, well, the rest of the competition. More to come. We move to Heat 5 on Test 2 when we return. Noble CrossFit semifinals here in Europe. Test two, heat five for the ladies here at Max Schmeling Hall in Berlin, Germany. Mads, this is three three minute intervals. You've got to pace yourself, even though it seems like you've got to sprint. You do, because you need to do five ring complexes, then onto 20 single, single leg squats for the rest of the time. Max rep burpee box jump overs. Let's head down onto the field and introduce you to the third member of our crew, Lauren Smith. Cheers, Joel. If you thought the go rut was awkward, well, you're completely right. It's 10 pounds for the women, that's 4.5 kilograms. 20 pounds for the men, that is nine kilograms. This strap has to be done up at all times, as does the one on the waist. It means that when you're going into those burpee box jump overs, although you can loosen it, it needs to stay on and it compresses the chest. It's not easy. Lauren, thank you. Mads and I, of course, both have our rucks on for the duration of this test as well. Wouldn't go anywhere without it. I think Lauren's going to keep that on as we move through. Take a look at our start list here. With 20 women left to complete this test, these are the 10 we'll watch at the moment. Elisa Fuliano made her debut at the CrossFit Games last year, is in lane five, next to a veteran in Karen Freova in lane six. Jacqueline Dahlstrom, known for what she did with a sandbag at the games last year, but watch her go to work on the gymnastics too. It's gonna to be really interesting, interesting to see how many of these ladies struggle with the second ring dip. Not necessarily the muscle up, but with the second ring dip. And whether anybody gets stopped in their tracks. Matilda Oyen Garnis trying to make her mark. Looking for what would be, in her case, a rookie appear or a third appearance at the CrossFit Games, finishing 19th just a year ago. 
So what we need to remember now, Joel, is that the tiebreaker is the score out of this first, these, this first interval, these first three minutes. So these ladies really need to get after it now. That is interesting. So in lane number three, Nicole Hare has already broken. So she did the toes to ring, then she did the muscle up, and now the ring dip. If she's doing that out of consideration that it's going to be hard, then that's, that's going to be a challenge because we have two more rings. The field starting to arrive at the single leg squats. Elisa Fuliano and Karen Freyova in lanes five and six were the first ones there, and it is Fuliano who moves forward onto the second set of five first. Mads, you notice the balance for everybody. These have to be unbroken, and by unbroken in this instance, we mean you just can't put your foot down. If you do, that rep is a no rep, and you pick up then from where you left off. So if I put my foot down after rep three, it doesn't count. I start over rep three, four, five, and I can advance. Exactly, and that's a, sli that's a slight challenge to how it's been in the past, and I know that these athletes have all had a these guys have all had plenty of time to, to try this at home. Jacqueline Dahlstrom to the burpee box jump overs. And notice how she looks down the field. She didn't do it that rep, but the first one, just a quick peek to keep track of where you are with about 90 seconds to do burpee box jump overs when she started. Well, it's interesting that she does that because, I mean, what she needs to remember is that she's competing with every other heat. So interesting where everybody else is, but not super interesting. <laughs> 45 is the number to beat by Aylin Verts. 61 is the best score that we've seen across any semifinal. That was Emma Lawson, the Canadian that is North brutal. America East. Absolutely brutal. score here is your tiebreaker. So we're going to see some ladies push the throttle, especially because you did the single leg squats and the muscle up complex fresh. Matilda Arian Gar Garnes doing a great job over the box. She did arrive at the box a little bit after Jacqueline Dahlstrom, but her cycling pace is a little bit faster. She may be able to catch up. Ten more seconds. Again, keeping in mind that the score to beat is 45. Dahlstrom is on to the rounds of 30 after the first round. Again, this is what we're looking at. Round two of this effort. Five ring complexes, 20 single leg squats for the rest of the time, max burpee box jump overs, and there's the added pleasure of the backpack. The only thing that counts in your score are the burpee box jump overs. The ring dip complex, the ring muscle up complex, coupled with the single leg squats, that's the gatekeeper. We have seen people today not get to the burpee box jump overs. <laughs> we have seen people during semifinals not get to the box jump overs, so you record a zero and qualify still. You just dig yourself a hole. You're not helping yourself <laughs> making this an enjoyable experience. Round two, three minutes. I'm interested to see whether these athletes are going to be able to string them all together or if they start breaking now to preserve a little bit of energy going forward. Look at how smooth Jacqueline Dahlstrom is on the left side of your screen. Exactly. I mean, just great technique, but once again, we're talking about allowing that swing, allowing that kip to give you a lever to come up. You cannot muscle your way through this and uh, expect to be able to get string them all together. It's funny because Jacqueline Dahlstrom has a 10-year background in gymnastics. She joked with us, you'd think it would have been more beneficial to my CrossFit career. It looks pretty darn beneficial. <laughs> <laughs> and so Matilde Garnas coming out here at the same time as Jacqueline Dahlstrom. And they're joined by Karen Freyova. Karen Freyova is a machine.
20 reps in the first round for Jacqueline Dahlstrom. Nineteen reps for Matilda in the opening round. She is currently in second place, tied with Karen Freyova. Now Matilda was cycling through her burpee box jump overs faster than literally everybody else in the field. She did arrive at the box a little bit later than Jacqueline Dahlstrom. That's 22 reps for Jacqueline Dahlstrom now. And again, you're looking at. 80 to 90 seconds of burpee box jump overs for these ladies at this point. You can do a lot of damage in that amount of time. Uh, you really can, but you can also absolutely fry yourself in that time, so you need to, you need to have a good pace. Well, damage being a multi-definitional term there. Looks like, on the left side. Yeah, it looks like Jacqueline Dahlstrom is slowing down just a little bit on her pace, not coming to the floor quite as fast as she would as she was in the very beginning. You know, Mads, it's slower, but it's still consistent. Yes, it is. What does that tell? Well, it tells me that she's done this before. She knows exactly how what feeling she's after, what heart rate she's after, and how many reps she's after as well. So now we've got Matilde Oyengarnes moving her box. Jacqueline Dahlstrom holding on to her, uh, to her lead by, I think it was three reps. Ten more seconds here in this second of three, three-minute rounds. And Dahlstrom just says, I'm not going to get another. I'll take a, <laughs> a minute and three-second break. So I've spent quite a lot of time in camp with Jacqueline Dahlstrom over the off season. And I know her preparation has been a little bit different this year, just in terms of having a bit more time off. And she's been like looking after a bit of a leg injury. But what it's allowed her to do is really focus on rounding out her game. She's obviously a strong gymnast and she is fired up after finishing 28th in test one. And I think what we're seeing is a reaction to that out on the floor. <laughs> this is the box jumps for Jacqueline Dahlstrom over the last round. There is just a smoothness to it, a pacing and a confidence. Well, there is, and also she came out and she was, she was a little bit faster to start with. Obviously, there is fatigue, but that, I don't think that's necessarily it. I think it was more that she came out, she knew exactly what she wanted or what she would have liked to get, and she's going out there executing. 36 reps for Dahlstrom right now. Matilda Garnis at 34, Fuliano 33, Freyova 31. Lauren also said an interesting statistic when it relates to Jacqueline Dahlstrom. She, in the first event, came in 26th. If you go to the other two semifinals of this size, which is North America East and North America West, people that finished in that range in event number one, if you dig yourself that kind of a hole, it's very hard to dig out of. Shelby Neal is the only person that finished worse on the women's side in event one and still qualified. She was 27th. All the ladies that finished in that 20 plus range in event one and qualified were in spots eight, nine, or 10. You have some climbing to do. Well, absolutely. I mean, nobody plans for a start like that, but it's, it's gotta be, it's gotta be comforting to know that it is definitely possible. It's just gonna require, as you said, a lot of hard work and maybe a little bit of luck. Yeah. Matilda Oyen Garnis came off the rings first here in this third and final round. So this could prove to be costly. So a no rep now, it opens up the door. And now Jacqueline Dahlstrom needs to get back on there. She needs to remain calm and then get out there and just execute. But it does open up the door just a little bit. And we've seen Ella Wunger, she's out there now. She's a little bit behind, but I mean, she must have saved a little bit. But we've also get, got Elisa, Elisa Fuliano out there. She's moving on to the bo uh, box jump overs now. And this may be exactly what the doctor ordered for her. Fuliano was in third with 33 reps through the first couple of rounds. 45 is the number to beat. And I think Fuliano should be able to pick up eight in a minute plus here. Oh, I think she will. So Jacqueline Dahlstrom just making it off the rings now. There she is. 
and I don't know, I mean, if she goes at this speed, she'll be okay, but she's not gonna have much time at all to rack up burpee box jump overs. No. And you've got Matilde Oyengarnes out there, she's racking him up. Elisa Fuliano, she's racking him up. And Ella Wunger also out there, looking like she's got a plan. Fuliano on the right side of your screen. Ella Wunger on the left side. Trains with Jacqueline Dahlstrom, by the way, both members of the program over in Majorca. So currently the leaders out there, Elisa Fuliano and Matilde Oyengarnes. We have passed 45 reps, so we now have a new test leader here. 45 was the number to beat by Aylin Verts. Fuliano leads the pack, and the final three-minute segment <laughs> is over. <laughs> You've got to love somebody who just goes all the way to the buzzer like that. That is beautiful. Everybody knows that feeling in your <laughs> local affiliate back home where you're trying to get one more box jump in and then you stumble off the backside of it. The difference is it doesn't take this many box jumps to get there. <laughs> that is true. Fuliano, we talked about Dahlstrom needing to dig out of a hole. Yeah. Similar spot. She was 25th in test one. So still within range. Jacqueline Dahlstrom was the woman who started things off here in the heat on fire. The pistols, nothing for her. No, no problem whatsoever. She kind of got herself in great position on the rings. Then box pistols, no problem. Box jump overs, consistent speed. No problem whatsoever until we got to the no rep on the rings. That's where things really got interesting. The door was open to the rest of the field. And Elisa Fuliano said thank you very much and went for it with everything she's got. So she's the new test leader. Passing Aylin Verts as your new test leader through Heat 5. We still have so much more to come, though. Our sixth and final heat of test number two. Ten more ladies trying to throw their names on the board. Twenty-three Noble CrossFit semifinals here in Europe. It is test two, heat six for the women from Max Schmeling Hall in Berlin, Germany. From Vail CrossFit, Lauren Smith, CrossFit Nordic, Mads Jacobs, and CrossFit Firewall, my name's Joel Gadet. Standings after test one, Jennifer Muir with 100 points and a test victory. Karen Freyova, we just saw 91 points in fourth place. Top 11 women are advancing to the CrossFit Games after this weekend. And Mads, we have three rounds of three minutes. We do. Each three-minute interval consists of five ring complexes. After that, 20 single leg squats. After the rest of the time, it is max burpee box jump overs. And then rinse and repeat three times. A recipe for success brought to us by RP. Patience on the rings. Make sure you utilize that kip completely, because trying to muscle your way through it is going to get you in trouble. Second thing is push all the way to the buzzer. Do not allow yourself any rest until you hear the buzzer. In lane 10, Claudia Gluck came in with a host of expectations. The French woman, 57th in event one. She'll look to dig herself out here in test two. Down to Lauren Smith. Thanks, guys. So behind me, one of the most influential women in the sport is going to take to the field, Annie Thoris Dosser. She's a two-time fittest on earth. Look at that, back in 2009. That's how long she's been at this game. And she's got six podium finishes as well. She's proved that you can come into the sport, you can give it your all, you can get medals, then you can go away and you can start a family. You can have a baby and you can come back and still stand on that podium. She's gonna be going for her 13th games ticket here today. And whilst it didn't quite start off possibly in the way she wanted, well, it's gonna come down to this event right now to get her competition up and running. Lauren, thank you. A seventh place finish for Annie Thor's daughter in test one. But she prepares for test number two. It starts with the ring complex, toes to ring, muscle up, 
ring dip. Mads will talk about this a bunch with Annie when it comes throughout the course of the weekend. If she could win the Noble CrossFit Games 10 years apart from when she last won it, <laughs> one of the most incredible accomplishments in sports. Well, absolutely, but just the ability to come back so many times, I think, obviously, I would love for Annie to, Annie to win the games, but I just want to see her at the games. I want her to be out there inspiring other parents to keep continuing their athletic careers after they've had kids as well. And if anybody out there is wondering, well, can I start now that I had a kid? Yes, there you go. We're off the rings and to the single leg squats. Thor's daughter, Angonese, Megala, Horvath, Tall, all across the middle of the field going to work. Claudia Gluck. We just saw there in lane 10. We talked about her having to do some work. Here's Emma Tall. Fuliano with 49 in the last heat is the new number to beat here. 49. 47 for Garnis, 41 for Wunger. And then, of course, Verts had 45. Those are the only people to crack 40 at this point. So Emma Tal and Laura Horvath made it to the box at the pretty much the same time. Gabriela Megawa and Manon Agonias making it to the box pretty much at the same time as well. So you've got these two blocks of athletes, these four athletes out there slugging it out because they need a good score in the first in the first one the first interval to make sure that if there is a tiebreaker they're coming out on top one more minute to work here claudia gluck is the first person at the bottom of your screen to advance the box at the same time as Annie Thor's daughter. Remember, Gluck finished in last place in test one, 57th. She came in 10th out of quarterfinals, so some work to do. Certainly not out of it, looking for her first qualification to the CrossFit Games. Well, knowing Claudia Gluck, I'm not, I mean, obviously she wants to, she wants to, to make it and, and get a ticket to go to the games, but more than anything, she's looking to redeem herself. She's not happy with this. Ten more seconds. Three, two, we only got a minute to reset before we do this again for another three-minute round. And that rep did not count. You could see the explanation from the judge. She didn't come down off the box in time. Oh. It is a box jump over. That's a box jump. She did not get down. Oh. Well, well so that was her starting the box jumps. But yes, that last rep did not go yep. into the bag. Oh, she's got to be happy with her start. No, no, there's no need to kind of labor on that. So the five ring complexes we're talking about is a toaster ring, a muscle up, and a ring dip. The thing is that they do not need to be unbroken. What you can do is you can do the toaster ring, then jump off, shake your arms, come back up, do the muscle up, and then the ring dip. No problem whatsoever. Also, by the way, I may have forgotten to mention, you need to be unbroken on the pistols. Unbroken meaning that you need to come to full extension of your knees and your hip, and the leg you're not working with needs to be off the ground, cannot touch the ground. That no rep was costly because Annie Thoris' daughter is your leader after round one. 20 reps, Claudia Gluck, 19. Manon Anganese, 18. Tori Helga daughter, 18. Also someone who had a tough test one. Annie Thoris daughter looking strong on that dip that's typically what the movement that's getting trouble, getting people in trouble. And Gluck, along with the rest of the pack, comes off first. It's interesting. You can see on the bottom of your screen, Claudia Gluck angles in as she does these single leg squats. Yeah. And now she angles out. I was going to say, maybe she wants to see where everybody else is at, and then it's like, no, that's not it. <laughs> the interesting point is that Annie is 
a lot later to the party than the first athletes. You got Laura Horvath, you got Emma Tall, you got Gabriela, Gabriela Magawa, you've got Claudia Glock out there, but Annie's behind all of them. Patiently taking her time. Yeah. Strive provides remote coaching software for your box and your personal training programs. With an all-in-one software solution, Strive helps you save time, track your athletes, and engage your community. Visit Strive app strivey.app or scan the QR code on screen to start your 14-day free trial. Claudia Gluck has now moved past Annie Thor's daughter. She is one rep ahead of Emma Tal right now. So bottom of your screen, blue shirt, Claudia Gluck. The burgundy shorts almost at the top of your screen, that's Emma Tal. There you have her, Emma Tal left side. Tall had 19 reps along with, or excuse me, had 18 reps just behind Gluck in the first round. Emma's doing a really, a really nice job of just being fluent as she's coming over the box. She's, I would have loved for Emma in a perfect world. It's easy for me to say I've got a resting heartbeat of what, 45 and a cup of coffee, but I would have liked her to come off the ground just a little bit faster than she does right now. But the transition over the box is brilliant. Gluck again advancing that box. We're supposed to see Claudia Gluck there. I don't quite see her. She's a big John Cena fan. <laughs> Maybe we'll check in on who's in lane 10. <laughs> Small sect of people that got that one. I think um, <laughs> I was on a podcast with her, and we asked her, what athlete would you like to hang out with? And she said John Cena. And I was like, hey, <laughs> you've got my vote. Thor's daughter caught herself almost falling off the box. Final seconds done for round two. It's so great to see Emma back at competition. She missed last year's semis due to illness and things have changed. She's been managing over the last couple of years a tear to her patella tendon and jumping's always been a problem. To see her out in that field doing as well as she is just goes to show how strong she could be this season. I was in the warm-up area and she was chatting with her coach and her coach just goes, you don't need me, you know what to do, and just sent her on her way. I'm not sure if you don't need me is the thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tall is one rep behind your leader, Claudia Gluck. 36 for Gluck, 35 for Tall, also for Annie Thoris' daughter. Gabby Magala has 36 as well, so it's Magala and Gluck. Oh, there she is. <laughs> 36 to lead the way. Back to it for your final set of five ring muscle up complexes. Claudia Gluck doesn't win this test and wave her hand in front of her face. I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> no pressure at all on the poor woman out there having to do all these muscle ups and ring dips at all. Uh, she's got a great back swing right here, allowing her good time to elevate her hip and then get on top of the rings. Then a strong kip, drive her out of the bottom position. And just as I say that, she stops kipping. Never mind. Something about jinxing people on the rings. I should probably stop doing that. Emma Tall, left side of your screen, comes out early. Laurel Horvath next to her in lane five, trying to make a statement. 24th place finish in test one. We've got a bunch of ladies here in heat five and six that are trying to bounce back after tough test ones. They've done that. Luck, you can see behind, she had a no rep just a couple of moments ago on the rings. That dip, she didn't come down deep enough there, Mads. Yep. And that's what happens. I mean, you start getting tired, and so you're not going to hit the bottom position. You stop. I mean, we talked about it. She stopped kipping the uh, the dip as well. It's just like you try to muscle your way through it. Gets you in a little bit of trouble. Then again, she's uh, routine enough. She's got enough routine to go out there and fix it, which, which is why she's already on the pistols. Thor's daughter, two reps off the lead. We've got a minute and 10 seconds left to get to the box jump overs and add. Again, the Barbie box jump overs are the only thing that count for your score. Everything else is just a gatekeeper. 
So one more minute to go for Amatalu. Trying to make up for lost time. Didn't compete at semifinals last year and has come out with a vengeance here in 2023. 45 more seconds and Tall has now picked up that methodical pace she had in round two. She is crushing it now. Laura Horvath has joined the party. And Laura Horvath has a tendency to just fly under the radar and there she is in the very minute you need her. Tough to say about someone who's a multi-time podium finisher, but it's true. We'll talk about her flying under the radar as we go throughout the weekend. Tall pushes ahead. Tall is going to be your test winner with 10 more seconds to work. Tall, I mean, I'm impressed with what she's doing right here. That is your new leader. That is your test winner, Emma Tall, closing out day one of competition with a phenomenal statement. Fifty-four reps. So Glock, Glock was doing great to start with. Box jump overs, crushing them, no problem at all. Then she got back and got had a no rep and kind of got herself in a little bit of trouble. Annie was in the mix very early on, but as we got a little bit further. The other girls were just faster faster on the rings. And Emma girls, was, Emma Tall was one of these girls. Once she got to the last interval, she just went on an absolute hunt. She did a great job, though, getting, getting off the floor really, really fast. And throughout the entire event, everything she did, everything she did was just an easy transition over the box and expending very little energy. 54 reps. First career test or event win for Emma Tall at a semifinal. She was only bested by Emma Lawson with 61 in the East and 55 from Jamie Simmons in Oceania. Let's go down to Lauren with Emma Tall. Emma, unbelievable performance. After not coming to semifinals last year because of the illness, how important was it for you to just create an impact? Uh, I'm not sure, but it was important for me to enjoy this because I missed out on last year, and I am enjoying it. <laughs> You've had such a topsy-turvy few years. You've traveled around a lot. Obviously, there was illness, there was your patella. What is it about your, your current situation that's getting the best out of you as an athlete? I talked to David before about this, because we were really nervous. And I said that I've trained the hardest and the smartest I've ever had for the last year. So. Whatever happens here, I will still be happy. How much fire is there in you to make it to the CrossFit Games? A lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can't wait to see it happen. Go well. Thank you. Congratulations. Emma Tall talking about her partner, David Sharonke, who's here competing this weekend as well. Neither one competed in semifinals last year. David was ill first, a couple of weeks before, then Emma got sick, and a couple of days before they were supposed to compete at strength and depth, they decided not to go. So this has been, for Emma Tall, years in the waiting. She wins by four reps over Claudia Gluck, who also has a huge bounce back. Laura Horvath has a huge bounce back. Helga Daughter, this test was massive for almost everybody on that screen. They all needed this. They really, really needed this, and they needed to do it on the same day that they got a start that they didn't really like. Still working on the complete official standings through two tests. In the meantime, we'll take a look at this same test on the men's side. We've got six more heats coming your way. Light coverage on the first three as we continue from Berlin with the 2023 Noble CrossFit semifinals.
you know, if you're interested in the games and you find yourself really captivated by what's going on there, truly what you're interested in is the CrossFit philosophy and method. And you should know that you've got a ton of amazing resources available to you. I mean, check out the main site, look at the old journal articles, dig in on the website. There's content every day that's posted on CrossFit.com that helps to bolster your understanding of, of what you're seeing unfold at the pinnacle on the field of play. I would encourage everybody that's a fan of the sport to dig in, find a coach, go get your hands dirty with this stuff, and it really does enrich the experience for you. Uh, not only in your life, but your ability to enjoy what you're seeing in front of you. And as an extension, I mean, man, if you're interested in the games, you're interested, therefore, in the method, go get your level one, go check it out. You'll find that everything that's expressed at the level one is the bedrock of what you're gonna see in the expression on the field of play. As a 10-year affiliate, I would advise somebody who's new and starting out in the CrossFit world to be passionate in your pursuit of education, to hone in your craft and your skill, which CAP programming helps us do, and really take the opportunity with the time that's freed up to get to dig in deep with your members and your community, get to know what motivates them and triggers them and keeps them excited about coming back. I have so much respect for my competitors, but when people compare me to the other competitors, it really doesn't even faze me because I know I'm already going to win. Athletes want to compete at the CrossFit Games because it is the pinnacle of their sport. If you just get to that point, you are one of the 40 fittest people on the planet. I don't enter a competition thinking that I'm going to lose. Going into the CrossFit Games, my sole purpose there was to win. Coming into the 2022 season, Tia Tumi has a chance to stand alone in history, to be the first and only athlete to win six consecutive CrossFit Games titles. The question was like, how is she going to do it? And what's that going to look like? I don't think it's going to look like years in the past where she's just win, 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 win. Tumi's back to zero. Oh, no. And O'Brien is across. I do not care how hard I go. I'm just going for it. A horse will race so fast that it's hard to explode. That's now. For the first time in five years, we are going to get to see Ricky Garrard at the CrossFit Games. The last time we saw him was 2017. He finished third, and then he tested positive for PEDs. Seeing Ricky wearing the white leaders jersey, I think forced a lot of people to confront a question that maybe we hadn't really considered about what our feelings would be around the possibility of not only Ricky coming back, but winning. He dropped that, I was like, you're gone. Yeah. Everyone's just roaring for someone to see Ricky. <laughs> Roman Krennikov went into destruction mode. He just looked like a machine out there. I know you're hurt. Everybody's been hurt, and you're tougher than everybody. You just get so hyped up, and you're like, I'm ready to attack this. This is going to be one of the most epic Saturday nights we've ever had. We've seen this before between Tia Toomey and Laura Horvath. He's got to keep his balance. He's got to keep his balance. Gerard will do it, and Medeiros will do it.
10 seconds. Stand by. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the individual test number two of the men. They will have a three, three minute intervals with a one minute rest in between where they have to perform a total of five ring complexes, one toes to ring, one muscle up and one ring dip, 20 single leg squats, and then the maximum amount of burpee box jump overs. They will be wearing a 20 pound rack on their back and they'll be jumping over a 30 inch box. Indeed, this is the first heat of six for our individual men here on test two. Day one for the individuals here at the European semi-finals. All right, we can see over here, lane number nine, uh, Luis Cuellar. And also over there in lane at number three, Sven Geens making their way forward together with Ignacio. Your top three out there on the floor at the moment. Uh, but it is lane number nine coming out of Spain. Uh, Luis Cuellar, the first athlete to make it to the Bertie uh, box jumps over. One minute remaining. So Luis Cuellar over here, happening up at seven reps. We can see Sven Geens in lane number three, only one rep behind. But let's not forget, they have a three times three minute intervals. So anything can happen. It ain't how it starts, it's how it ends. 30 seconds. And we can also see Emmanuel Babiano moving his way forwards. 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Rest. One minute. So as it stands out here in that, that first interval, your top number two, lane number nine in the yellow, uh, Luis Cuellar from Spain. And then we have uh, Gregor Mariskiewicz over in lane number eight, your one and two. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. All right, so we're now out there for the second interval, three minutes, five ring complexes. We have a tie in between lanes number nine, Luis Cuellar from Spain, and uh, Zegos Madaskevic in lane number eight. But very closely behind, we can see Sven Gins in lane at number three, and also Ignacio. All right, so it's Sven Geens making his way forward. Uh, there in the black in lane number three. 
as he is tied for first place. Luis Cuellar, lane number nine in the yellow, making his way forwards. They are currently at 15 uh, burpee box jump overs apiece. And wanted to increase on uh, that lead. We saw 54 burpee box jump overs by Emma Taller on uh, the women's uh, individual fleet. 90 seconds. And Sven and Luis, a neck and neck, black and yellow, Berlin, let them hear you. <laughs> also in the middle, Emanuele Babiano in the blue, are joining in on the Burpee at Festival. One minute remaining. So your current leader in the yellow. Uh, over here we have uh, Luis Cuellar making his way through. Uh, 23, 24 box jump overs. Yes, Stevie! 15 seconds. Two, one, rest. One minute. All right, so still holding up the lead. Out there in the yellow, you perform. Luis Cuellar out of Spain. Walking his way into this final three minute interval. Thirty seconds. Go, Dada! Ten the seconds. Storm. Stand by. This is the final round for Heat 1, Test 2 for the men. The final opportunity to score in this second event for these individual men. All right, two more complexes over here for Luis Cuellar. Let's see if he can hold on to that lead is going unbroken in lane number nine 29 repetitions on the burpee box jump over but also over there Sven Geen starting to make his way on to the pistol squats with Ignacio Iaramendi So no rep there. We can see Sven Gaines out there. Lane number three in the black. Walking his way through to the final five. A single leg pistols. 90 seconds. Sven Gaines in the black is only two reps behind. 
As Luis Cuellar has fallen back over there on the complexes. So one more. Lane number three, your leader, Sven Gins. Athletes, one minute remaining. So now it is a question of who can hold on the longest. As also we can have Emanuele Baviano making his way through, trying to catch up. Yeah, if they're going to go, they've got to go now. We're moving on. The clock is ticking. Thirty seconds. Final push, athletes. Final push, Berlin. Let's give them a little bit of hype. Let's go. Let's go. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, time. And a big round of applause to our individual athletes out on the floor here for this test number two, uh, powered by Stridey.
seconds. Stand by. And here we go, test number two, heat number two, three minute window, three rounds to score max burpees over the box. But first, these athletes have to perform five ring complexes and 20 single leg squats. They will have those three, three minute windows to be able to perform as many reps as possible. Your top athletes in Europe looking for that ticket all the way to the Noble CrossFit Games. Yeah, the second test for these athletes here on day one, and here they come, Joe. Yeah, we could see there Pietro Andaloni, Mattis Coca, and Sam Parking, and Emilio Rossini moving pretty much equal across the field in this first interval. Lane number seven with just a couple of reps advantage. Matez Koka on his final five. And he is going to be the first athlete, lane number seven in the white, to start off on his burpee box jump overs with the rack on his back, 20 pounds of weight. 90 seconds. Athletes, one minute remaining. And we can see already over here, lane number seven making his way through. 11 and 12, lane number six, Sam Parkin out of Wakefield CrossFit, joining in on the fun. seconds. Jason Lachane over here from France out of CrossFit Blackwing in the blue lane number nine pushing his way forward. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, Rest, one minute. All right, well, it looks like we have a 22 repetitions. Lane number seven in the wide matters. Kuka leading the pack so far. Thirty seconds. Once again, a big shout out to Go Rug for getting uh, the backpacks to every single one of these athletes. If you want to go and grab one yourself, try out this test. Make sure to check out at GoRug.com. Ten seconds. Stand by. Window number two for the second heat of the individual men here on test two. You can see these athletes have a number of burpee boxovers with that rock on their back, on the back. So second test and second window. Yeah, all of these athletes going pretty much unbroken on those five complexes that they have to perform. And then it is getting it down and making their way forward as they have 20 single leg pistols to go. All right. 
right, leader out of interval number one, and lane number seven, uh, we saw Matas Koga has the highest burpees at the moment, but still out there on the complexes. It looks like Sam Parkin is gonna be moving forward, and Brian Hernandez. Yeah, this handy pound weight in the rock is making these pistols just that little bit more technical for these athletes. seconds Emilio Rossini but it is a Sam Parkin is going to be the first man to jump it over and get to the floor It's one minute remaining. As they enter that final 60 seconds, now it is when they're going to start to hit. Brian Hernandez, Varia, Crossfit, Aprendendo. Very, very close on these burpee box overs with that 20 pound rock. Athletes, you are coming in. You have. 30 seconds. Approaching at the 30 reps. We have 26, 27 reps. Sam Parkin waiting to see. As also over there, Hernandez coming up on the 28. 10 seconds. Three, two, one rest, one minute. Let's give these athletes a round of applause uh, as we have that second interval. Still one to go, three minutes to go. And as it stands, we have a 30 apiece in between a Sam Parkin and Brian Hernandez out of Spain in lane number three and Sam in lane number six. 30 seconds. <laughs> 10 seconds. Stand by. The final window of opportunity for Heat 2 on this second test here at the European semi-finals and off they go. And Zach Wilde and Enzo Smile starting to pump up the groove and get the vibes down here Berlin as this is their final interval. Sam Parkin out of Wakefield CrossFit sitting on 30 reps. Lane 8 currently sitting on 29. This is close now between this second heat. Emilio Rossini and Sam Parkin coming out of Wakefield CrossFit making his way through. Rossini slightly ahead on this third interval. And we can also see down here Jason Langale making his way through lane number nine in the blue. seconds remaining. Emilio Rossini already standing it up to the burpees as he has a slight lead. Only two away to be taking the lead in this heat. Sam Parkin also making his way and over here Matt Simis 
CrossFit Mitch's lab. Yeah, so you're now starting to see a little bit of fatigue in the legs from those single leg squats, these 20 pound rucks on the athlete's back. We are just under the one minute mark left now for the second heat on the second test. What have they got left? It is neck and neck in between Rossini and Parkin. Parkin and Rossini, lane six and five. Oh, watch out, watch out. They are moving so well here on the floor. Athletes, you have just 30 seconds. Wakefield CrossFit makes some noise for 86 burpees. They are putting it down right here. Here we go, athletes. 10 seconds. Three, two, one, time. A big round of applause and a shout out to your heat winner from Wakefield CrossFit, Sam Parkin.
And here we have our third heat. Test number two here at the European semi-finals for our individual men. A three minute window with a one minute rest to complete five ring complexes, 20 single leg squats with that 20 pound ruck and to score max burpees over the 30 inch box. Three rounds. Put And they're going to be having that 20 pounder rack on their back, weighting them down. And let's see who's going to be the first athlete to make his way out. All right, it looks like we have over there Nikita Yudnova in lane number three. But joining him pretty much equal, Colin Bouchard and Michel Wesolowski. David Sharuka over here, lane number eight, and we can see lane number ten, uh, Zola Hoster. But it is uh, Yunov making his way forwards. Twenty uh, single leg squats before they start on those maximum reps of burpee box jump overs. Ninety seconds remaining. So it was Colin Bouchard, the first man coming out of CrossFit Burn, to start to go over the box jumps. All these athletes moving well in this first three-minute window, keen to get that score of burpees over this thirty-inch box. Carrying, of course, that 20 pound rock. We have one minute remaining. Already more than 10 repetitions. We've got 11 over here for your current leader. Lane number four in the purple. As we can see, Colin Boschard, CrossFit Burn, making his way through. But also joining him in the black, Nikita Yundova. And in the red, uh, in the black, we have Roman Philidor. 30 seconds. <laughs> 10 seconds. Three, two, one, rest. One minute. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. Window number two. This is our third heat of men. Already had a little feel of this workout. So back in for their second scoring opportunity in these three rounds. Yeah, they know what they have to get through. They've already touched it up, as you said there, Stella. So they know the toll it takes. And let's not forget, they've just come off of doing an average of around 15 to 20 burpee box jump overs with that little extra catch of that 20 pound go ruck on their back and once again we can see Yundov, Hoster and Pieri lanes number three, ten and nine your top three at the moment
So the leading athletes making their way through those single leg squats, 20 repetitions for the individual men with that 20 pound rock. Keen to get back to that 30 inch box. 90 seconds remaining. And here we can see Alexander Nasagasti also starting off on his pistols there in lane number seven. So it is uh, Colin Boschard, lane uh, number four, who has the biggest score as it stands with 22. Uh, uh, here we can see also uh, Yundov trying to track him down. One minute. Boschard had a CrossFit burn, uh, a solid advantage, pretty much seven reps away from any of his other competitors. But watch out over here, lane number 10 out of Belgium, Jelle Hoster. Thirty seconds. Already more than thirty reps. Thirty reps out there for Colin Boschard, your leader in the purple lane number four. Ten seconds. Three, two, one. Rest one minute. All right, so as it stands, we have in first place uh, Colin Boschard, lane at number four. Then over here, we have in that lane at number 10, uh, Jenna Hoster with uh, 29 repetitions. Thirty seconds. And in third place in lane number two, uh, Romana Filanoa, your top three. Ten seconds. Stand by. And here we are, the final, the third scoring opportunities here for test number two, and this is heat number three. Fatigue starting to get involved now at 20 pound ruck, making these five ring complexes a little more technical. These athletes having to work harder on those single leg squats, but they need to get back to that 30 inch box to close out this second test here at the European semi-finals. Yeah, you can really see at uh, this test number two are uh, really showcasing a uh, full fitness as we have uh, gymnastics, we have balance, and then we have engine with those Berkey box jump overs. Oh, watch out, Mishal Wenagoski over there, lane number five moving forward. Yes, Joe, so it looks like a couple of these athletes have saved a little bit in the tank for this third and final scoring opportunity here. Yes, because over here in lane number 10, uh, in the gray out of Belgium, Gene Hoster, he is only five reps away from the leader, and he is getting very, very close to start off with his burpee, box jump overs. Athletes, you have 90 seconds remaining. Michal Wilokosi already making his way. He has 26 repetitions. Starting to make that increase as he goes, but lane number two, Romana. Phil or no? Oh yeah, the door is open, Joe. Anything can happen. These athletes still have one minute remaining. 
So it is a Phil on all lane number two in the black out of Castanet, Tolosana. And Jelle Hosto over here in the gray. Lane number 10, a badly out in between them. Yeah, they're closing the gap now. Just two or three reps separating the leading three in this third heat. Athletes, you have 30 seconds. Only a couple of repetition in between your top three. But making a skedaddle over there, Colin Bossard. Lay number four in the purple, your current leader. Yeah, if you're going to move, you have to go now. The clock is counting down. These athletes are on the final 10 seconds. Three, two, one, time. Berlin, a big round of applause uh, to our male individual athletes out here for test number two, uh, powered by Striving. Just a couple of weeks before KISS plays this building. We are in Max Schmeling Hall here in Berlin, Germany for the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games Europe semi-final. Men's test number two, excuse me, men's test number one, a 3,000 meter echo bike to start things off, descending by 1,000 on each machine as you get to the end with that hand over hand sled pull separating each of those movements, 225 pounds Mads on those sleds. Well, it was it was brutal. Guys got on the bikes and they did a really, really good job of getting after it fast. We did see a lot of people struggle, not Henrik Hapalainen right here on the sled though. I think it was a lot heavier than a lot of people thought. Lazar Lukic did a great job getting ahead on the run, held on to that run, extended it on a skier and came out on top. Lazar Lukic uh, hyped with himself after that one, but it is Yele Hoste who comes away with that event one, excuse me, that test one victory, 100 points in the bag for the Belgian, and then Jukic in there, three points behind, 97 in his bank after test one today. We will send 11 to the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Mickey Smith just behind that cut line. Aldis Upenix at the moment has claim to that 11th and final spot. Here in Max Schmeling Hall for test two, we are on heat four at this juncture. Three heats already in the books. Showed you Yella Hoste with his victory. He is your leader in the clubhouse at the moment. Alongside Mads Jacobson, Lauren Smith down on the floor. My name is Joel Godad. 41 is the number to beat of this test, man. It is three intervals, three minute, three year, three, three minute intervals, five ring complexes, 20 single leg squats, max burpee box overs. Men will be using a 20 pack or 20 pound ruck and a 30-inch box. Ten individuals competing here in this heat. Luca Vunyak, who had a good event, or a good performance in test one. Guillaume Briant is trying to make his way back to the CrossFit Games. In lane five, there is Luca Vunyak. Out of Rome, Italy. Serbian by nature, his affiliate, CrossFit Minus in Italy. We're joined here in this heat by CrossFit's general manager of sport, Justin Berg. Justin, good to see you. Welcome good. to Germany. Thanks. 
Good to be here, Joel. Good to see you, Mads. Well, thank you. Good to see you, too. What's it like for you to not only have an event back in Europe, but for CrossFit to run an event back in front of a European theater? I think this is really important for us. First, it's great to be here. Uh, so I live in the United States. The United States obviously has a lot of good athletes, but Europe has been knocking on the door. So many good athletes here, so many different cultures and gym communities represented here. Uh, I think when we were looking at the semifinal structure overall, it was really important for us to own and operate this major market, do a great job for the athletes, and create a real championship environment for these athletes on the floor. Well, it's funny you say that that uh, Europe is, is getting more and more good athletes. I think the field is really, really deep, but you alluded to it when we talked at Strength and Depth uh, about a year ago. You said, we are going to need to see a bigger width of athletes, not just the forerunners. We need to kind of see the people that are going to fill it up. We were wondering when it's going to happen. I would like to say it's beginning to happen now. Yeah, it is. I mean, you just look at the, the quality of the competition. You're seeing athletes here. We've got two heats after this. There are some excellent name brand athletes here, people that are trying to get back to the games like you talked about. Uh, Europe is just so, so competitive. And I think there's a lot of young athletes too. So you're starting to see like that really senior class grayed out. I mean, with the exception of the Annie's and the BK's <laughs> of the world who are saying, come and get it. They're the reigning king and queen over here. Uh, but man, just a really, really deep area. And like I said, the championship nature of being here will inspire a lot of other countries and young athletes to want to be on the floor with them. And eventually they'll wear that crown. Now the test officially starts here. The reps begin counting once you get to the burpee box jump overs. Just a gatekeeper on that ring muscle up complex and the single leg squats. Once again, 41 is the number to beat. Yella Hoste in the last heat throwing down that gauntlet. Justin, I, I know you come at this from the sport perspective, but that growth goes beyond just sport because with that, hopefully comes growth down to the grassroots level, to the affiliate level, to the methodology level. Europe is one of those great next frontiers for CrossFit as a mindset, as a thought, as a fitness regimen. How has it grown in this continent because of everything that maybe sport has led? I think it starts with the coaches and the trainers and the affiliates. I said those are the people that are teaching young men and women or people of all ages and abilities about CrossFit. You're seeing here on your screen the top athletes who are competing for medals. What you're not seeing is the hundreds of thousands of additional people who are not having diabetes, the ones that are losing weight, the ones that are playing sports recreationally, they didn't think were gonna be possible for them. So it is kind of a virtuous cycle. So you see the top athletes, but there's a big pyramid, kind of the, the iceberg you don't see are the people who are having their lives changed by CrossFit. And I think that's the really exciting part about what CrossFit's doing in Europe. Max Olive Strand on the left side of your screen, Antoine Dumay on the right side of your screen are your leaders at the moment in the heat. And Mads, I know to that point we were talking, when you got into CrossFit, you had one L1 in Europe, two L1s in Europe. It was in the early stages, it's boom. In the early stages, I mean, back in the wild, wild west, it was all of Europe would go to one place because there was a level one. Now there is a level one available so close to your home, you don't have to go out and wait and hope that you get a spot because they were all sold out all the time. Now they're much more frequent, much closer to you, much more available. And dare I say, they're just getting better and better. We were awesome back then, but they are getting better and better and better. And Justin, this is where sport is that tip of the spear because the people competing in front of everybody today, an increasing number of those are now certified level one, level two, even beyond trainers. Yeah, and it just makes sense, right? So you're, what you're seeing is that more athletes going and taking the level one course and learning about the CrossFit methodology lets them train for the sport at the highest level with this little waste. And you've got all the accumulated knowledge of those trainers and other people have gone ahead of them. They get to take that, they get to drink from the fire hose, and then their training is so much more specified to what they're gonna be tested on when they reach the floor. And I loved like the spot last year of Chandler Smith sitting there in CrossFit Southie, taking his L1, and here is an elite level CrossFit athlete who is learning with the rest of us and saying, you know what, like here's something I didn't know. I, I think that's part of being a good athlete is you have to really understand the sport that you play. So regardless of what it is, it baseball, football, soccer, CrossFit, you need to understand not just the rules and the techniques, but you really have to be immersed in the culture and how this whole thing comes together, and there's no better place than the level one. I mean, if anybody's kind of, if anybody's looked at the CrossFit film that is that is playing in between these different tests, you are seeing how 
a, a PBC air or front squat in a seminar setting, and then you're seeing your front squat at the games, literally the same. It is, and I think that's one of the things that people get surprised at is like, wow, I'm actually training the exact same, same things. Yes, it's a different thing at the games because it's gonna give you heavier, but it is the same thing you're doing. Yeah, and I think Boz talked about this last year at the game. It was one of these great interviews that kind of got washed away with everything else. CrossFit should be the trunk of the tree and there's many branches that go off of that. So all of your technique comes down to that core how do you move your body? How do you stabilize the midline? How do you get through a full range of motion with high intensity safely? Oh, and by the way, you should continue to explore other progressions that are gonna take you further in your fitness. Well, that's just what we're testing here. If you hadn't heard that before in a level one setting or with a really great coach, this would be a foreign concept when, hey, we're gonna vary the muscle up a little bit, or hey, we're gonna have a little different twist to a, a new element of the CrossFit games. That's fair play in our sport, and you need to hear that a bunch of times. I mean, one of the things you hear a lot when you do go to a level one is, you know, mechanics, consistency, and then intensity. That's also not new, and it's funny because that's one of the keys that keeps on popping up when we see these competitions as well. A minute left to go thereabouts here in the second of three, three minute rounds. That is Luca Vunyak, who we spotlighted from the jump. He had 17 burpee box jump overs in the first round, second place be uh, behind Ludwig Hansen the 32-year-old out of CrossFit basement in Helsinki, Finland. There is Hansen on the left side of your screen in the green shorts. Making his third semifinals experience, expecting more of himself every single time. And that continues to speak to the growth of not just these individuals, but also each region. And Justin, I'm sure that all factors into how you guys continuously assess the process moving forward and how you arrived at how semifinals works this year. First time we've seen a semifinal with this many athletes, with this many qualification spots, certainly the way that the depth of field has been assessed at each spot, so you've got a different number of qualification spots. How have you liked watching it play out for the first time? Well, first, I, I like it a lot. I'm going to start off with a lot of these licensed events that are taking place around the world. So Asia's going on right now. Australia was awesome last week. So was Copa Sur in South America. Um, so we're seeing a lot of really good licensed event partners that are taking it on in some of those developing parts of the world. What I really like about this format, the very large field of athletes, the intensity on the competition floor has never been higher. So all the athletes are there, big fields of athletes. So those final heats are really, really intense. For us also, it's more sustainable. It is expensive to run these competitions, to bring this type of media coverage to our crowd. When you can get twice as many athletes into a single event, it's better for the athletes because we can focus our resources on a smaller number and it's more sustainable for us in the long run. We need to stabilize this stage so we can get on to some of the more exciting stuff. And I'm really happy that we made that change this year so that we can start experimenting with things that are we haven't done before. And it's louder. There's a lot of people here. <laughs> Everyone's coming to the same spot. Yeah, twice as many emotions, you know, so <laughs> twice as many athletes that are winning, uh, you know, having that kind of high high. And also, you know, it's, it's tough. You know, there's injuries and there's other things as well. And it just really puts a, a magnifying glass on it. This is round three of three minutes. If I can make one recommendation, though, off of the licensed events, uh, can we get the flames from Torian Pro and everything else? The flames are cool. <laughs> I think the flames are cool. Uh, uh, not in Germany. Too, it's, it's not safe enough for the, uh, for the German fire Oh, that's marshal. true. Yeah. yeah. Isn't Kiss not allowed to go back to a town because Maybe of that? Not. Yeah. You're going to see some changes to that show. Changes you never expected. <laughs> Justin, I do have one question, and, and obviously I'm not going to try to put you on the spot, but we've talked about the games potentially moving internationally at some point. Is that still something that you guys are considering? Or have you kind of gone, you know what, we're, we're good where we are? Is it like, how, what are the thoughts? The thoughts around that. We're in the United States at least this year and next year. So we know that we're going to yep. be in Madison. I think it's a possibility. I think right now what we're really focused on is how do you okay. create, like I said, the most stable, sustainable system that we have. Yep. I think what we need to do is take our top athletes into other places in the world. The Invitational did that for us years ago where the top of the top are really the ones that are introducing to CrossFit and amplifying the impact of the CrossFit games. Whether that needs to be the entire competition, teenagers, masters, all the way up in the teams, that's a much larger and more difficult show to rotate, especially outside the United States. But I do think for sure the next step is we need to take our top athletes and bring them into other parts of the world. I'd love to get our top athletes back down to South America, continue to pour more fuel on the fire that we're seeing in the growth down there, and then bring some of the top athletes to Europe where a lot of these guys already reside. 
It's funny you said it, because my next question was going to be, would it be potentially possible to split between the, the different groups? And then you just answered that question. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of moving pieces. The good news is we don't have to make that decision for next year. So, again, no. what we're looking for for all of our athletes is a lot more surety in their season planning. They know what next year is going to look like. It should look very familiar to what this year looks like. And then as we get into a more long-range planning mode, then we'll be sharing that out and also including a lot of other people in that planning process with us. So that no not just for the athletes, spectators as well. Have you not been to Madison? Do it. I mean, it is an amazing city to go to. It is. Just so that no rep in lane seven from Luca Vunyak, who was your leader coming in, 33 reps. The guy who's leading the pack right now here in the third round is right there in lane six. That's Martin Cuervo out of STL CrossFit. He was only four reps off the lead coming into this final round. So we got 30 seconds to go. Now, Luca Vunyak did end up with a, a just blistering performance when we were at uh, in Amsterdam last year. And look at him now. Just look at the, the pace he's got going over the box. But also, you do have uh, Victor Helsinghoff in lane number one. He's also trying to get up there. Closing in on the final five seconds here. 41 oh, was the number to beat coming into it. So that's going to happen. <laughs> we will have a new test leader as we move into Heat 5. That is exactly how you know that you did everything you possibly could when all you have, all you can do is just fall over on the box afterwards. <laughs> and then you try to get, get, get the backpack off of you. Justin, when you tested this uh, test, what was the... How many of these do you play around with before you come to the, the before, various semifinals? Actually, I, uh, Boz and I did this workout in the athlete area last night, actually. So, did you really? Yeah, uh, so uh, <laughs> Boz is a more gymnastically inclined person than I am. With no backpack, Boz got 41. I got less than 40, uh, so we'll just say generously. We've got heat number five coming up. This is test two for the men. Justin Berg is going to hang around as we step aside, getting set for our final two heats. Test two, heat five for the men here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit semifinals. We are in Berlin, Germany. Closing out the first day for the individuals. Test two sees some gymnastics thrown into the mix. It's a ring complex, single leg squats. That, Mads, is a gatekeeper. It, re it really is. The single leg squats, whoever's been able to kind of make their way through that have done the best in the past. Burpee box jump overs. That's where the stats are racked up. That is where you pick up reps. 44 by Luka Vunyak in the last heat. That's the number to beat. We've only seen five athletes eclipse 40. Have to imagine we'll see a handful of these 10 get over that bump. Handful of former CrossFit Games athletes in this mix, including Bronislaw Olenkowicz, who's trying to make his return to the games in lane five. Let's go down to Lauren Smith for more. Cheers, guys. If you went into the athlete warm-up area only 15 minutes ago, you'd have seen them crowded around the television. I was stood next to Aldous Upenix and I asked what they were looking for, and he said that the judges are being very stringent on the final press out of the dip. So his strategy to take those a little bit slower, make sure he gets it right, and go full send on that final round. Lauren, thank you. With Aldous Upenix trying to make some moves here.
30 seconds until the first of our three minute rounds begin. Justin, I want to come back to that judging point before we dive too deeply into this first three minute round that will start on the rings. It's the total ring into a ring muscle up, into a ring dip. They don't have to be performed unbroken. You can drop in between those movements, then hop back up on the rings and begin again in the spot where you left off. But Justin, as we get underway, the, the point about the judging, people talk about driving the sport of CrossFit forward. You want to see that. You want to see the judges being able to hold people at this level to a very strict and stringent standard, particularly when the point of CrossFit is the, the movement standards, right? You want to hold yourself full range of motion, getting everything correct. That's right. And, you know, I've spent a lot of time listening to athletes as well on the subject. What the judges and the athletes both want is less subjectivity. So they both want to know exactly what's expected so they can go do that. I think we've got some opportunities to be better in the way that we brief and transmit that to the athletes and set our judges up for success. Uh, but really, I think the way that you make the judging better is we need more local competitions to develop some of these guys as well. I think one of the trends that you see is where there is more competition, there's more judging, the quality of the judging gets higher, and you can be more selective with the best in that field. It's a pyramid, just like these athletes are in. So I think one of the ways you grow that is better standardization, better consistency, better co uh, communication with athletes and judges up front. The other is these guys just need a lot of practice at lower levels as well. And I think you're seeing that in Europe. There's a very experienced crew here. They hold themselves to a high standard and they work often. And that's why I think we've got a relatively high degree of consistency with this judging crew here. How do you become a judge at this level? At this level, you it's just like how do you become a major league umpire? You have to play at a lot of different levels and progress up. Nobody gets good overnight, but you have to work on earlier heats or in sometimes smaller competitions, develop your skill in making the tough call, seeing and communicating clearly, and then you work yourself up through that system. A lot of the judges that you see here, you're designed not to see them because they're just doing things well consistently. They got their hands in the air, they're making the right no rep calls. Uh, but you've got to show up at a lot of competitions to be uh, to really develop that experience. And then at the games, it's mostly seminar staff, correct? It, it's a combination. So for the teams in the age group, that is a developing opportunity for a lot of people to work themselves up into the more prominent divisions. But yes, at the CrossFit Games, what we look for is the highest skilled, best eyes in our sport. So we use the level one seminar staff trainers for all of the individual competitions. That way you know that you've got somebody who's cool under pressure, excellent with their eye. And by the way, those are also coaches and judges in a lot of local competitions as well. They've got the most practice for the longest period of time, seeing and correcting movement. I think a good point that you just alluded to, Justin, is the ability and, and confidence from the judges to communicate with the athletes before. This is what I want you to do. This is what I want to see. This is what I'm going to be looking for. Nobody's trying to set anybody up for failure. Quite the opposite. You're trying to set everybody up for success with as clear points of performance and standard, movement standards as possible. That's the point. Everybody's in the same boat together. Yes. So what the judges do is they validate their performance of the athlete and they promote a fair, consistent competition. That's all you want because yep. you want these guys racing as fast as they can and being held to a standard. It's the same thing with drug testing. CrossFit's not trying to go out and pull guys or knock guys out. We do that because it helps validate the athlete's performances in another way off the competition floor that they're doing things right at home and in their training as well. Uh, I think that's a really, it's, a re it's easy for, it's easy to get caught up in thinking, oh, God, so the, ju the judges are going to be on the other side. That's not the way it is. They're actually trying to help. We're a third of the way through here. First round of three minutes down. They are trying to help. It's a thankless task. We're really grateful for the volunteers, the judges, the medical staff, everybody that contributes to supporting these athletes. That's the goal, is you want these guys to be able to showcase what they've worked so hard for in training on the big floor. And when they do that really well, they introduce CrossFit to new people. And that ends up putting people more into the walls of a normal gym. They find a coach. So it's a big kind of circular thing, but um, it takes a lot of people selflessly giving in order to create a stage where these guys can shine. That's Alex Katulis, 18 reps on the burpee box jumps in the first round. 20 is the lead. That is Antoine Dumain in lane 10. Now the tiebreaker at the end are your burpee box overs in the first round. So that number will be big. Also had 18 from Henrik Hapalainen. Karavis, Olenkowitz, Jungdahl all had 17. So we have a, we've got half of the group here in Heat 5, all within three reps of one another. 
I think it's really interesting to see on the left side of your screen, you've got Henrik Hapalainen. He just jumped off right now. He's moving towards the, uh, the pistols. Slightly taller athlete. We talked about it before. Being a taller athlete isn't necessarily a problem on the rings if you've got the patience to allow that kip to go all the way. So you get momentum, and then you accentuate that momentum through the extremities. And Hendrik Hapalainen did a really great job at that. Justin, when you watch these events play out in their totality, and the tests in particular, uh, we spoke to Adrian Bosman earlier as the director of competition, and your role is general manager of sport. Where do you factor into the conversation of, all right, Adrian, what do we have for our tests? Um, like, how do you factor in maybe, or how do other people factor in as another set of eyes to look and say, um, this is a complete test. This is where we want to go. And what is that collaborative process like? Yeah, I think it starts with somebody has to be the lead programmer, and that's Boz. So he is setting the vision. Uh, what we do up front is we talk about what do the semifinals need to accomplish? What is the, What are we trying to do from a show standpoint? What are we trying to do in terms of the number of scored events? Uh, what do we need to bring to support this competition in terms of gear, volunteers, facilities, and things? But then really one person has to lead that programming effort, and that's Boz. He does a really good job bringing a lot of other people into that process. That's both uh, kind of testing athletes, other people that have kind of an expert knowledge of the CrossFit methodology, some people that are red shirts on seminar staff, some people that are affiliate owners, some people that have been athletes. Um, so in that case, he pulls a lot more people involved. What I'm really excited about is a couple weeks after we leave here, we get to be in Madison, or not Madison, uh, we will be in Madison for a pre-production meeting, <laughs> but then uh, shortly after that, we'll be testing the games workouts, and that's one of the most exciting parts of the year. Uh, so to see the big show on display where it's nothing is off the table, semifinals are hard to program uh, because it is a smaller, more constricted version of what we have in Madison, so it has to be a lot more refined, but, uh, but at the games, um, it's big and it's a whole different ball game. So it's uh, it's fun to see this stage, but we're always looking at the next stage or the one after that. So please follow Justin Berg on social media for a bit of a glimpse on what the work. You're not you're not going to find what anything gonna good be. there. You're not going to find anything good there. But um, but it, but it is a fun process. I think Boss is doing a very good job. Uh, there's a lot of people that are involved that support him in that effort. Um, including the athletes. You know, I think the athletes and getting feedback and seeing how they perform here, that sets the stage for what we should expect from the finals athletes. We've made the end of round two. Our leaders are still the leaders here. Katulis and Dumain at the front of the pack. Both of them having completed more than 30 of their burpee box jump overs. Bronislaw Lankowitz also at 30. Dumain at 32. Henrik Hapalainen at 31. And Alex Katulis at 34, as you got to look at Antoine Zuman there out of CrossFit Tonka. Just a very broad question at this point. Uh, when you look at where we are in a semifinal stage, when you look at the planning going forward to the CrossFit Games for 2023, how do you look at this from 30,000 feet and say, here's where we are, what's next? Like, how do we push that next frontier? Uh, where do we grow? What does the CrossFit Games of the future look like that is different now in bigger and broader ways? I think a lot of it, like we said, looking back, it was how do we create more certainty and surety for the athletes and their training? Now it's really how do we push hard off that platform and see how high we can go? I think the goal of the Games is to use our sport as a vehicle to introduce CrossFit to new audiences. You know, if we're going to reach tens of millions of new people, sport is a great way for us to do that. Mm. And then also, how do we drive them into a coached relationship? How do we drive them into affiliates? How do we drive them into one-on-one -on -one training? How do we drive them into a lot of the education that'll help you get fit fast with lower injury rates? Um, so I'm excited about that, but honestly, I think our top athletes and being able to showcase them more often is absolutely in the middle of that. In addition, I think adding a higher degree of consistency below sort of the games in the semifinal ranks. How do we support local licensed events, developmental opportunities for athletes and judges, and also great community experiences for CrossFit. I think there's a lot of room for us to grow there as well. Uh, but I think the next frontier is how do we continue to introduce CrossFit to new audiences using our top athletes and some maybe new media and competition related uh, projects. Can we create local licensed events for people that aren't very strong and are bad at high-skilled movements? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you can, and that was the intent behind the level system that we started a couple years ago, is that, hey, there should be different ways you can play this sport. So the, the pyramid has gotten very steep at this point. I think we need to broaden the base in the middle of that pyramid for us to really grow the sport as well. So it's not just the top athletes. You only get so far there. You need to really broaden it so it's approachable and accessible for people of all ability levels. I appreciate that. Sounds awesome for us, Joel. <laughs> We're in the mix. <laughs>
We've got 90 seconds left here in this third and final round of Heat 5. Again, 44 is the number to beat. And through the first couple of rounds, Alex Katulis is your leader at 34 Mads. I think he's probably going to get 10 burpee box overs here in this final round. I think so. I mean, Henrik Hoppelainen did make his way to the box a little bit ahead of, uh, of Katulis now, but Katulis has just been relentless and unforgiving on his way over that box. Hapalainen was behind by three reps, so he's got to make up a little bit of ground with that early start. 28-year-old out of Helsinki in Finland. One minute left to go, four more reps until he can advance his box. That'll put him past 40. Sam Parkin was the first to 40 in Heat 2, Yellow Hosta in Heat 3, and then 44 by Vunyak in Heat 4. Yes, yeah, so it looks like Katulis has a three-rep lead over Papalainen and Dumain right now. It's going to be rough. It's 30 seconds, so they really need to step on it if they want to catch up with Katulis. Katulis is building off of an 18th place finish in Test 1. We will reseed for heats after this test, so going into day two. You want to be in the latest heat as possible. Try to run with the Lions at your back. Competition breeds success. Put yourself in the best position to move forward as we hit that three-minute clock. <laughs> Bronislav Olankovic on the floor. Katula's Katula hanging, <laughs> hanging over, the, uh, over the box. These guys gave it all. Justin Berg, the GM of Sport for CrossFit, joining us. Here on test number two, Justin, uh, congratulations on the event, the success. Appreciate the time. We will see you in Madison. Thanks, and I'm going down to the floor. This last one's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be <laughs> hot and heavy be a blast. as we get into heat number six. We're in the most populous city of the European Union for the Europe semifinal. On the road to the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games, it is test two, heat six, Max Schmeling Hall here in Berlin, Germany. Out of CrossFit Vale, Lauren Smith down on the floor. Mads Jacobson from Nordic CrossFit. My name is Joel Godet out of CrossFit Firewall. These are our standings after one test. Jelle Hosta out of Belgium is your leader. 100 points in the bag, but Lazar Jukic is right on his hip and someone who you know came into this weekend with his eyes on the prize. Well, he sure, he sure did. He's been doing everything right, balancing his training and his and the mental component of being an athlete. So yeah, he's, uh, he's in the right place. Three rounds of three minute intervals, a minute of rest in between. Mads, you just have to get yourself to the burpee box over. Well, you do, but first you need to do five ring complexes, then 20 of the single leg squats. After that, get to work, make some points on the uh, burpee box overs. And that's where the points are. That's the only thing that counts toward the score. So patience on the rings early, don't burn yourself out. Exactly, both that, but also in every single solitary rep, make sure that you get a lot of momentum that you can then bring yourself on top of the rings with instead of muscling your way there, because that will not help you. Also, push to the buzzer, go all the way. Do not stop with the second to go. Moritz Fieberg playing on the home turf in lane one. The crowd goes nuts every time he is introduced. As we go down to Lauren Smith. Cheers, guys. We've had some wonderful storylines running through this semi-final season, but none other than this being the third opportunity for the third man to achieve his 10th consecutive CrossFit Games. You had Noah Olsen, who secured that North America East, Cole Sager at North America West, 
And now it's the time of BKG. He's a stalwart on the European scene and he's Mr. Consistent. We know over the years he's had a great battle with Lazar Dukic for first and second here in Europe. But perhaps this is the time that he can take that top step and make his 10th consecutive CrossFit Games. Yonikowski also close to that mix. He is going for nine in 10 years, Max. <laughs> Yonikowski is the same thing. He's had a couple of injuries that have kind of gotten in the way uh, a little bit, but nine times speaks volumes of his capacity. And he started very, very young. He's made it every year since 2014, with the exception of 18. One of the most veteran and still under 30 competitors in the sport of CrossFit. <laughs> that is insane. Under 30. So he started out very, very young. I remember the first competitions we saw him on the floor. Everybody's like, he's got a bunch of potential, but let's see how far he goes. Let's put it this way. He went all the way. The only thing he hasn't done yet is won the games, but he's done everything else. Oh, Victor Hoffer coming out first onto the pistols. No surprise there, Victor Hoffer may be the best pure gymnast in this entire field. And Victor Hoffer didn't have the start he wanted in test number one, so he's really going after it now, and I like to see that. Attack it, get it out of the system, and then put yourself in contention. No, a huge hole to dig out of a 53rd place finish. It's always great in your affiliate when everybody rallies around to cheer you on to the end. It's not so great at the semifinals when everybody else on the floor is around you trying to cheer you on to the finish. Well, what's interesting, we've talked about it before, is that if there is a tie, your score from this first, the first three minute, this first three minute interval is the tiebreaker. Mm. So, I mean, you really can't take it easy here. And I think maybe Victor Hoffer has that in the back of his mind as well. Alex Katoulis right now is your clubhouse leader at 50. And Katoulis had 18 reps in his first round. There's Moritz Fiebig in the green on the left. Yonikowski in lane two. Lawrence is a real powerhouse. He's a slightly he's a slightly bigger athlete as well. I would love to see him at least on this first one cycle just a little bit faster. I think he would I think he would benefit from that. I know it's easier said than done, but I mean I really think Morris has a bunch of big things in the future for him and I'd love to see him set himself up as much as much as much success as possible. He's an impressive athlete. The way he punched his ticket to the games last year was one of the best things I've ever seen. These athletes aren't messing around, advancing the box. We've seen people push and drag. These guys are just picking the thing up and moving it <laughs> into the next quadrant. Moritz Feeberg on his second grouping of 10 burpee box jump overs with 30 seconds left to go. He's halfway through that. Again, Katulis has 50. That's the best score. He had 18 in the first round, which is the tiebreaker. That was just 18 for Fibic. Koski has 19. Now he's at 20 with still five seconds left. And Koski is going to try to get over. And yes, nice. that rep will count in lane two for Yona Koski. He's been in this game a long time. He thinks he can podium, he thinks he can win. That's why you still go at it, and he proves it at least here early in a heat. Strivey provides remote coaching software for your box and your personal training programs. With an all-in-one software solution, Strivey helps you save time, track your athletes, and engage your community. Visit strivey.app or scan the QR code on screen to start your 14-day free trial of Strivey today. Scores through that first round. 21. That last rep was huge for Yonikowski. Then it is 20 behind by Victor Hoffer and Moritz Fiebig, along with Fabian Benito, who needs another great performance. He was 30th in test one. I hope Yon is okay. I mean, you saw him kind of stretching his, uh, his peck a little bit, feeling it a little bit. I hope he's okay. And watch that muscle up. It looks, Mads, like that left arm is out further away from his body. It sure does. Uh, it sure does. I don't know if he has, any, like, 
something that like a little bit of a hiccup, a little bit of an injury that he's nursing, or if it's just from something way, way, way back that kind of got him different, a different kind of skill set. But um, it does look like he's not enjoying it a lot. That being said, he just went unbroken, and he's now on to the pistols. Feebig is right behind him, but it is Koski out in front. Through his first five single leg squats. Mads, we said he sees himself as being able to win. His goal is to podium. He's never been there. Yonikowski's best finish was sixth in 2021. He made a change this offseason. He's working with Yami Tikin. That's new. He feels like it's paid dividends. Well, I think that's exactly what you need to do as an athlete. If you're an athlete like Yomne, then you need to go out there. You need to identify what it is you're lacking and then find it and add it to your regimen. Working with Yami taking in and considering who Yami has been working with in the past, that is obviously never going to be a bad choice. Yami taking in, of course, coaching of Annie Thor's daughter and Bjork and Carl Goodmanson, who we talked about off the top in this heat. Midway through round two of these three-minute rounds, the number to beat is 50. Alex Katulis in the last heat. Koski is at 34. Excuse me, I can't count. <laughs> Koski's at 37. Now 38. Hand is in the air for Feebig. He has 35 reps under his belt. So now Yonne move, moving, the, moving the box. The interesting thing about Yonne is that his technique and his cycle time is literally the same as it was in the first three minute interval. That's what we've seen before. If you want to win this, you need to maintain a consistent pace. You cannot be going up and down. Yonikowski was the only man this far along in the test until Moritz Fiebig moved his box up behind him. But Koski is just moving and grooving. Let's not sleep on uh, Lazar Dukic either. He is climbing up just a little bit, and he may just have a sprint in him. We've seen him do that before. But Yonikowski, middle of your screen right there. The purple shirt is doing a very, very good job. And now, there you go, he gets to move the box again. 50 is the time to beat. That is not going to be a very large mountain to climb heading into the third and final three-minute round. Yonikowski's putting on a show, but when you think about upper body pulling, that is Lazar Zhukic's jam. He's coming into this test in second, so he's already got a good bit of forward momentum. He stated earlier on in the week that he's not here to take part. He's coming here not just to qualify, he is coming here to win. He wants to feel good going into Madison, and he's making a great job of it so far. Well, Lazar Duke. Lazar Dukic is doing a great job, and Jomne said it as well, that he wanted to come here and he wanted to do as well as he possibly could. There you have him chalking up and getting ready for the last three minutes of this. But here, here's what we saw in between, just feeling out the peck a little bit and just kind of checking out the range of motion. Am I okay? Looked like he was okay. I was a little bit afraid there because we did see in the past that some athletes were getting a bit of peck trouble just because of uh, both, well, the, the, the muscle up, but primarily because of the dip. 40 reps for Yonikowski. Lazar Jukic is in third with 35. Moritz Fiebig is in between those two with 36. That is Fiebig in the green in the background with Koski going to work here. He needs 10 reps to tie with Alex Katulis for the test win. And again, the tiebreaker was your first round score. That was 21 for Koski. It was 18 for Katulis. And this is huge. Moritz Fiebig, right next to Yonikowski, came up a little bit wrong on the muscle up, which means that he had to jump off now. He had to fight a little bit to get the muscle up, and that opens up the door to Yonikowski even more. Nice eruption as Koski moved forward onto the single leg squats. He has the crowd behind him here. I think the crowd is also cheering on Moritz Fiebig, who is struggling just a little bit on the rings right now. You see him making his way onto the pistols now. He's 11 reps behind Yonikowski. But again, these reps don't count to your score. It's just the gatekeeper before you make it to the burpee, uh, the burpee box jump overs, and that is what counts for your score. Minute 45 left to go here in round three of three. So now what we want to see is Koski maintain the same steady pace he had over the box 
as he had in the last two intervals as well. Koski needs 10 reps for the test win. Vance, can he do it in 90 seconds? <laughs> uh, yes, he can. He definitely can. Just 28 years old from Helsinki, Finland. So much experience, though. So much experience. Invitationals, regionals, sanctionals, games. This guy has done it all. Two years removed from his best finish in Madison. He was the sixth place finisher in 2021. He'll claim the test victory as soon as he advances this box and holds off anybody chasing behind. And right now that's Lazar Jukic in the gray and black pants, middle of your screen. Moritz Fiebig also in the hunt, but it is Koski advancing first. There's that test win, huh? Just has to keep pace. Don't open up that door for anybody. And there's nothing about this movement pattern for Jonakowski that indicates he will. <laughs> Quick check of Lazar Jukic. He was watching the field, looking to the side. 10 seconds left here for Jonakowski. I think Jona is very aware of where he is and where everybody else is. 15th in test one. It is first here in test two. Jonakowski moves into qualifying position before moving day tomorrow. 57 reps to finish things out for Jonakowski. That is the best score across any semifinal. Jonakowski has all reason to be happy in flexing just a little bit, as if the flex he did and how he executed this was not enough. I love what I see from Jonakowski, and he should enjoy the, uh, the crowd celebration right now. For as long as Jonakowski has been at it, that is semifinal career win number three. Moritz Feeberg was in the mix. Zanoni as well. 52 for Enrique. Victor Hoffer there finished with 49. Well, Hoffer came out of the came out of the uh, the start really, really hot and heavy, and we know that he's great at gymnastics. Tore through the muscle ups, but the guy who caught him on the uh, on the box jump overs was Jon Nikolski. In between rounds, we were wondering, is he going to be okay? Because he was kind of checking the peck. He got back on the rings and it was no problem whatsoever. Even had enough energy to kind of cheer the crowd on, get with the program. And once he got out there and saw that Morris Fiebig was a little bit str was struggling a little bit on his muscle ups, he just went in, did what he does, and came out with the test win. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Jonakowski is in a qualifying position, and for that he gets to speak with Lauren. Jona, 57 reps. That's the best across all of the semifinals. You knew that this was going to be a good workout for you, but how much extra pressure does that bring when you know you're going to excel? Yeah, for sure, yeah, it's, adds some pressure, you know. When you know you're, you're good at something, you usually put that pressure on yourself, but in this case, it's helped me to push, push harder and, yeah, trying to clinch that worldwide best score. Still not quite as much as I did in training, but, yeah, I'm happy to, yeah, get this event against so, so competitive feel. It's a uh, yeah, good start for, for the competition. Most of the strategy that we saw involved taking it easy at the beginning and pushing hard at the end. You flipped that on its head with a 21 reps in that first set. Why was that the strategy for you? Yeah, well, I thought because you need to move the box every 10 reps. So it's worth it to push the first round so that you can do those two transitions. So you don't need to start with the transition because it always kind of breaks up your rhythm a little bit. So, yeah, worked out pretty well this time. It really did. You're chasing your ninth CrossFit Games. How much more have you got to give the sport? Well, I don't, yeah, I just yeah, love, love being around, love doing this. But, yeah, I don't think I or any, anyone have seen the best of me yet. So I'm working hard to, uh, yeah, hard to get to that point. We love having you. Massive congratulations, great job. Thank you very much, appreciate it, thank you. Combined with eight regionals wins, that's now 11 regional or semi-final victories in the career of Jonakowski. 57 reps, he wins by five over Enrico Zanoni. 
who kind of flies under the radar because he shared the same heat with Yonikowski, so all eyes were in lane two. But Zanoni is in second. Lazar Jukic gonna be near the top of the leaderboard overall with those 50 reps for a tie for third. I love hearing Yonikowski say that you have not seen the best of me because he has been amazing in the past years. And if that's how he feels about his current condition, we've got a lot to look forward to. The man's 28, Mads. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for the post game show. First day of competition for the individuals is in the books here in Berlin. Much more to come. Stay locked in on the stream. We'll recap the entire picture for you when we come on back next. The 2023 Noble CrossFit Games European Semifinal is brought to you by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Rogue, don't weaken. Strivey, elevate your remote coaching to the next level. GoWad, the mobility app designed for athletes. And FitAid the number one recovery drink on the market. been anxious about stuff um, and it really came back with a vengeance just after my father died back in 2012. He was, a, he was a great big character and very funny and everything like that and to lose someone like that leaves a gap in your life obviously and it's not just me but everybody. He was not engaged with the world as much as he could be I would say. He was generally sluggish, he wanted to sleep a lot and he wasn't actually enjoying life. Mental health in particular is a massive side effect of not being healthy. If you're not healthy, the brain's not going to perform particularly well for you. It's not going to give, it, give you its best. So I was aware that fitness is a thing, it's just that I've avoided it like the plague for a very, very long time. But I knew that if you got the body moving and got a bit puffed out and moved more, you will enjoy the results. And that's when I started to explore the idea of taking some exercise. So first time I met John, he had never done any gym work in, I think it was like 20 or 30 years. I don't think he knew what the gym was about. It was a CrossFit gym, but I didn't know what CrossFit was, never heard of it. And I thought, I can't just turn up and walk through the door, that's, that's gonna be a bit scary. So I thought, well, maybe I start a conversation. Sent a note to Glenn saying, I'm in my 50s, I'm desperately unfit. I don't know what to do, how can you help? So we come over, we, we had a chat, and the idea was to start off with, we was just gonna be one-to-one -to, -one to warm him up to see if he would like to come and try a class. And John knees out, hips extended all the way at the top. I wanted somebody to, to encourage me, to cajole me, to push me a little bit. That's it. But wait for it to get to the shoulder before you come back down, that's it. From there, we had five or six more sessions, put him onto a class, He's such a people person, he gelled with everyone. Well done, John. Big job. Glenn worked with John, obviously, intensely at the start when he went to CrossFit, and he's shown him that no matter what age you are, no matter how fit or unfit you are, physically and mentally, you can do it. Getting fit is, is you know, you just don't do a workout and you feel fit. It's a process. What I found was, suddenly, about after a month, I thought, I'm not tired in the afternoons anymore. I wasn't like that a year ago. John's just improved so much. It's great to think that we've had a, a bit to play in that. 
CrossFit is an essential part of, of, of my life now. I can't imagine life without it. If I'd known the benefits of getting fitter and, and doing CrossFit and stuff like that, I would have started decades ago. <laughs>
Berlin, Germany is the host site of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games Europe semifinal. We have two days of competition in the books. Alongside Mads Jacobson, my name is Joel Godet. That's on the team side, the individuals with their first day of competition here on Friday. Mads, it has lived up to every last bit of hype. Oh, God, it has. I mean, we were setting our expectations pretty high, but they have been blown out of the water, and I don't know what to make of what we've got ahead of us. On the team side, well, Oslo Navy Blue came in with all of the hype. Oslo Navy Blue has put themselves in contention. We'll get to that in a second. These are the teams that are challenging right now, 11 through 20. The top 10 teams are going to make their way to the Noble CrossFit Games come the first week in August. Oslo has four of the top 14 teams. You could have one gym with a record four teams in Madison. It is very possible. We talked about it before that, hey, there was a lot of attention on Oslo Navy Blue. Obviously, they're great, but the rest of the teams have really delivered. And as you said, you've got four teams. That's unheard of. And it showed on the first test that we saw today when Oslo Navy Blue picked up the win and Oslo Blackout came in second. Oslo Rebels <laughs> came in fifth. The depth in one gym is immense. We've seen some other people throw their names into the mix. Andre Houdet's No Shortcuts CrossFit is not an underdog. They are not off the radar. Everyone knows about them. Well, from there, we'll flip over to the women's side, where after a couple of tests on day one, Emma Tall is your leader. It's a great story after she missed last season because of an illness. It is. She did talk about it herself, that she was really, really fired up and that she was looking forward to kind of coming back onto the stage. And she's doing a great job. She's performing really, really well, and I think we've got a lot more to see from her. Favorite Laura Horvath is in 10th place. That is a qualifying spot after she was 24th following test one. Aylin Verts would be looking for her first appearance at the CrossFit Games. She is 10 points back, then Amy Kringle, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, a lot of eyes on her trying to make it back to the CrossFit Games in 14th place. Our Rogue Don't Weaken moment of the day, that belongs to Claudia Gluck, who came in 10th out of quarterfinals, took a dead last on test one, and then blue test two out the water, even after a critical no rep cost her. Well, I mean, she did set herself up for a little bit of a challenge on the second one, but I mean, she did it really, really well. Even though she did get a little bit stuck, she stuck with it, and uh, yeah, she came out on top. Emma Tall, though, able to jump in front. She was there neck and neck with Annie Thor's daughter, with Claudia Gluck. Tall is the one that secures that test win. It's what propelled her to the top of the standings after day one. And it was just consistency over the box, just great consistency, same speed all the time, and knowing exactly what you had ahead of her. On the men's side, things look a little bit interesting. Lazar Jukic, 191 points. He has performed phenomenally consistent. Yonikowski wins event two. He is in a tie for fourth with Yella Hoste, who was looking for his first appearance at the CrossFit Games. Colin Bossard as well, the college student. 119 points is one point up on the farmer, Bronislaw Alenkowitz, trying to head back to Madison. Test two, though, that was all Yonikowski. A test record, 57 reps. Well, it was. We were a little bit worried when we saw him kind of stretching his peck that way, but once he got up on the rings, it was just methodical execution of those repetitions. Even left him with a little bit of energy so that he could get the crowd fired up as he made it onto the, uh, to the pistols. But once he got onto the box, it was just let it go, buddy. And that's what he did. The little things make a difference. He told Lauren Smith afterwards that he went for that extra rep in the first round so he would have to cut down a transition. That extra rep is what set him with the test record when he passed Scott Tetlow's 56. That sets us up for moving day or on the team side, the final day. And the teams get going with test five at 11.45 local Central European summertime. The individuals get going at 1.20 with our coverage, tests four and five. You can maximize your CrossFit performance with GoWatt's tailor-made mobility program. Try it now with a 14-day free trial. Go on. In Berlin, Germany, that is our second day of competition in the books. For Lauren Smith, for Mads Jacobson, for our entire crew, my name is Joel Cadet saying so long from Europe. Two more days of competition. The teams, they have won. We're going to send people to Madison tomorrow. So join us back here in the capital of Germany and all of our coverage on the road to the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games.